That's what I be chasing. Money, money, money. I chase it, your boy impatient. I roll with some bitches. My life is so nice. I smoke a fat blunt, eating chicken fried rice. When I la loquera, leve con la güera. Pero de la verde suficiente no me queda. Pura mota buena, pura vieja buena. Si no me calibas, tengo cortes, no te agüites. Los locos, mira como andan estos tipos. Y grifos, fuman marihuana, ya les digo. We own it, we get it. We high and we with it. Get it like living and you know. We stay trippin', somos locos, mira como andan estos tipos, y en grifos, fuman marihuana, ya les digo, we own it, we get it, we high and we with it, get it like dippin', and you I, know I, we I stay take trippin'. drive to the beach, Cortez on my feet, rollin' thirteens, eyes low like we sleep, lighting up the spliff and yeah we smokin', west side, state of mind, that's how we rollin', move your head to the beat. Cortez on my feet, ray bands on my face, eyes slow like we sleep, lighting up the spliff and yeah we smoking. West side state of mind, that's how we rolling. For goodness sake, let me live, don't play your hate. My Cadillac is swinging, smashing through the interstate. You claim you real, but deep inside you know you fake. This ain't no knockoff, it's that shit you cannot duplicate. I smoke a stick. Bitches, they all love my whip When I was rolling bad, the local wasn't getting shit So fuck a bitch, ask my ex, fuck a bitch I don't trade tattoos for pussy, man, I ain't no fucking trick West side, spokes keep spinning And I slang good ink, LA style, that's the beginning I remember getting bent on the 40 ounce of beer Padded up my homies, early 90s was the year On that Sherm holding fences, Cortez I was reckless, now I'm cashing out checkers I got some homies to the bitch So we keep on drugging While the wee wee puffing On the real no bluffing Yeah, to me it's nothing I, I, I take a drive to the beach Cortez on my feet Rolling thirteens, eyes low like we sleep Lighting up the spliff and yeah we smoking West side, state of mind, that's how we rolling Move your head to the beat Cortez on my feet, ray bands on my face Eyes low like we sleep Lighting up the spliff and yeah we smoking West side, state of mind, that's how we rolling Rolling Pull up to your city. I tune in with my folks. I pull up with that drink and they greet me with the smoke. I only fuck with real ones and feed me camarada. That love and respect. Yeah, I do it for my partners. Worldwide connect. I earn that respect. Stop around your area with a black flag on my neck. Holla when you see me on my mind. I got that squilla. Riding and we shining. Yeah, you rolling with some hits. Coming out of pocket. Yeah, we checking you one time. If you hide like Osama, then that's just a waste of time. Blow out on the gas. Yeah, the dody got me low. Go. Homie showing love when I pull up in that low, low. Eyes hella low. Sensing me, you're very sticky. Always showing love and respect in your city. You know we ride together. That's the real nitty gritty. We trying to get that bag. When we pull up in your city. No, we don't worry about that time. We just pouring drinks and toasting up to life. When I pull up in your city. Connecting with all different time zones. Everything is lovely, man. Come on. When I pull up in your city. We touching down at your spot. Dipping through your city in a rat time. When I pull up in your city. We live in good times, even if the haters think we're not. When I pull up in your city, the locals show me love. They pull up with them gifts, they fuck with me real tough. Bottles of the finest that we pouring out that liquid. I tacked up them gangsters, yeah, my G's are always with When we pull up in your city, it's nothing but respect. My homies down south, on the wheel, they represent. My hitters in the east, they really keep it gully. Midwest G's, yeah, they ride this shit, ain't funny. So most locals, yeah, we link up. The wheel always connect. I'm Gucci at the airport, yeah, your boy don't break no sweats. All love, round up. 
that's for real in your city. We tune in with the real, going hard in the city. Up and zap and watch, real loud through our ditty. Welcome to Los Angeles, it's active in my city. Calles Angelinas, do or die in the city. I know you got my back. When I pull up in your city. No, we don't worry about that time. We just pouring drinks and toasting up to life. When I pull up in your city. Connecting with all different time zones. Everything is lovely, man, come on. When I pull up in your city. We touching down at your spot. Dipping through your city in a rap time. When I pull up in your city. We living good times. Even if the haters think we're not. Okay. When I pull up in a question, I'll cat off, I'm in the field with it. But I play it close and keep it still with it. Thug it out, who real with it? Oh, it's West Coast, ain't no joking. Talk slick and we smoking. OG taught me how to run it, nigga. Game of bitch, no token. I was all out in the open, so who hiding out like me lying? And posting shit late lying. Talking already left and I'm flying. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Get up on this nigga block. Hold it down, remain silent. Ain't no rape case here flying. Down a nigga at the low low. Sunday Fondy with my riders. So who going up and still local? I'm power on, keep it funk. Specky get money, he focused. In the Cadillac, ride by the ocean. Hold up, 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 hold up. I hear landmarks when I touch down. Other niggas wanna hide the deck. But I tap in with my G niggas. When I pull up in your city. No, we don't worry about that time. We just pouring drinks and toasting up to life. When I pull up in your city. Connecting with all different time zones. Everything is lovely, man. Come on. When I pull up in your city. We touching down at your spot. Dipping through your city in a rap time. When I pull up in your city. We live in good times. Even if the haters think we're not. With most mobile companies, saving is a swing and a miss. Sorry. But Cox Mobile has a better way to help you save. A smarter way. Because we run on the network with unbeatable 5G reliability. Sick. With plans as low as $30 a line. Now that's a win worth celebrating. Cox Mobile. The smart way to mobile. Yeah. Okay. Come on. Uh. Ha -ha. Okay. Heartbreaks. Yeah. Come on. Okay. Heartbreaks. Getting big cake. I be in the field, but my girl think I'm fake. Playing with her mind. I'm simply getting mine. Money, money, money. Yeah, that be all the time. I'm just trying to get it. She think I'm chasing bitches. I be chasing euros on my kids. I gotta get it. Duffel back full. Yeah, your boy do his thing. Money on my back, cause I hold it in a sling. Custom crew neck. Yeah, your boy is so local. She say I'm just a barrel. I tell her I won't solo. Dog in these streets, and I live where I roam. West Coast G's, so you know I own my own. It's okay, no need to be tripping White walls on the coop, looking fly while I'm whipping yeah, Solo que su bella, solo yeah, sigo la yeah, night Yo no sigo putas, yeah, tranquila yeah, little mama Somos dineros, buscando dinero No se me aguante, chiquita la quiero Simón, soy un loco, desde el oeste Puro ingreso, 24-7 Heartbreak Hotel, Heartbreak Hotel We don't kiss until Heartbreak Hotel Heartbreak Hotel, I'm watching Sir Winston Heartbreak Hotel, Heartbreak Hotel We don't kiss until Heartbreak Hotel Heartbreak Hotel, I'm watching Sir Winston
sir, what it says Please don't ask me where I'm going Where I'm at or where I've been I'm on the move, yeah, I'm on the clock And I'm getting paid, getting what I get Please don't ask me where I'm going Where I'm at or where I've been I'm on the move, yeah, I'm on the clock And I'm getting paid, getting what I get All leather inside, then it's on my mind I'm really in the field and I'm trapping one time I never clock out, been working overtime Took the day off back in 1999 My life is a dream, I'm pouring out the Went from being broke to rolling with some heavy hitters Still money getters at the heartbreak hotel I love you long time, yeah, the love for real See more like Ojales, quizás no me miras Un sacrifice Piso normal de la vida, seguimos padelas, puro pa' arriba, que aún y más ferias, con entre ligas, vuelve a verme en el gran pelotero, me siguen las putas, a ti yo te quiero, no se me agüite, girl don't be tripping, heartbreak hotel, on the real yeah we get, heartbreak hotel, heartbreak hotel, we don't kiss until heartbreak hotel, heartbreak hotel, I'm like sir, what it says, heartbreak hotel, Heartbreak Hotel, we don't kiss until Heartbreak Hotel, Heartbreak Hotel, I'm more concerned with it says, eh, no se me agüite, aquí andamos, dándole recio, mija, puro pa' delas, puro pa' delante, ya sabe, mi amor, usted no se agüite, hay que darle recio, eh, ya sabe, let's get it, let's get that money, don't be tripping, we don't get this shit, Huh? Yeah. Come on. Fear cannot be contained at Universal Studios Hollywood Halloween Horror Nights. Silence your screams if you want to survive a quiet place and more. Grab your tickets now. Event not recommended for children under 13. There's a rhythm in the markets, in the resonant echoes of the opening bell, in the preludes leading to global elections, in the rising chorus conducted by AI. And if you want to learn to listen for it, we'll show you how. Learn more at Bloomberg.com. Yeah. It's King Lil G tattooed guns in his bitch. You know what I'm talking about? Bozo, what up? I wanted all the baddest bitches, went from racks to riches, starving, we was broke as fuck, but fuck it, we what was up, what the up? business, yeah, yeah. riding on the wall, walking to the corner store, up, tell me one? what you bang, I'll introduce you to that 44, what it is it's yeah, hitting for, uh, I'ma need 11 more, started, your homie started tripping, now we slipping on that bloody floor, I've been trying to tell you we'll what being the boss is all about, I watch about the individual homie cause they be falling out, what it's like to be Mexican making millions, tell me what it's like to be driving around with no ceilings, I wanna motivate all these youngsters and all they siblings, cause shit get real as fuck when you witness one of these killings. Me and my dog, we gon' ride through the city. Me and my dog, we gon' ride through the city. And yeah. all these bitches, I'm taking them with hey, me. King. Check and all me your out bitches, real quick, I'm bro. taking them with I'm me. I'm pulling down yeah. this Bible as I'm picking up this rifle. How can you stay humble when these suckers uh, wanna touch you? I carry on this promise, I will kill you for my dog. For my dog. When I pray to God, let him know I want it all. I, want it I took all. the biggest loss when you left me in the halls. The day my father died, I was sitting behind bars. Now I send cars Man. when no loan, I paid them off. Woo. These motherfuckers soft, ain't nobody uh -huh. taking off. Oh, you so gotta pose with guns and the bitches, you a fraud. They know that I'm strapped, I ain't gotta show them off. Baby looking at me like she wanna no. take them off. Bitch, no. I'm a don in these streets. What you thought? What you thought? Me and my dog, we gon' ride through the city. Me and my dog, we gon' ride through the city. And all these bitches, Welcome, I'm everyone. taking them Welcome with me. Toro. Good to see you, my and boy. All your bitches, I'm all taking right, them homies. with me. Yeah. We're gonna get started yeah, soon. You. We'll get started you. like about two minutes after we're gonna let some more folks start this real quick. You. All right, I tell you I'm a killer, I'ma show you. I'm loading up this pistol and it's for you, motherfucker. As long as there's ups, there's definitely gonna be downs. Keep your faith strong. Stay connected to the man. Always do your best. 
And best believe you get through this. This real locals don't cry. Look at the sky, and I say to myself, why my young homie done die? Pain in my heart. And I hide all the tears, cause they say that real locals don't cry. Feel a real hurt, cause your boy just got burnt. Chalk it up, cause it's all lessons learned. I thank God for the hand that he dealt me. Only the solid and that's me, hallelujah. Ain't no love from the institutions. Yeah, I've been feeling disillusioned. Friends turn to enemies. Is that the way it's supposed to be? Man, it's a trip though. Say me a prayer and I'll ride long. Cadillac dreams in a coupe and I touch the inside and it's all really looking so new though. Amen. They say locals don't cry, but I'm broken inside. Hear the oppressed and just listen real close to the marginalized. Take a look in my eyes. Locals don't cry. Real locals don't cry. These ain't tears in my eyes. Pain in my heart. You can tell mama try. Yeah, it's cold on my side. Locals don't cry. Locals don't cry. Real locals don't cry. These ain't tears in my eyes. Pain in my heart. You can tell mama try. Yeah, it's cold on my side. Locals don't cry. Five being broke. Hearts on the pieces. I wanna give up, but I feel like I need this to feed this hunger that I have to be better. My shorty still left, but the fact is I let her. These verses are the letters that I write to my own mind. I feel the hate and no love. From my own kind I want to drink to forget And stuff my nose to get lost But I know how the pain goes It's only temporary I hear the devil dare me Put in work like I know to be legendary But in my secondary I pick it off the Hail Mary I put up shots that'll lay him in the cemetery I know I can't cry So it comes out as anger And only cause violence I know to a stranger That's my explanation for the things in the past I can't let go Cause the pain don't last Good to see everyone I see some familiar happy faces on here That's what's up Good to see you fellas. Locals know uh, your today we got the local uh, high school incredible messenger training no school. Man, it's is. gonna be cool. We got a lot of uh, agenda. Um, so we'll get to it. Uh, locals know it about uh, Yeah, the system's friends. alive. Knots in my chest, blowing out smoke, and I hide in my hoodie. Got a phone call that I didn't expect. The hood kinda hot, you can blame on the rookies. My homegirl crying, her brother just passed. A smidge in a bad dope will lay you out flat. It's breaking my heart, I'm absorbing her pain. We lost a cool cat. How sad is that? I pray to Chuchito, me pongo bien grifo. Escondo el dolor y resisto, no chico. Locos no lloran, tiro este pisto. En paz que descanse, le pido a Diosito. Real locos don't cry, we don't shed a tear. Been like that for years. Look at the pain we grew up in this thing, and I pray every day, so I hope that he hears. Locos don't cry. Real locals don't cry. These ain't tears in my eyes. Pain in my heart. You can tell mama try. Yeah, it's cold on my side. Locals don't cry. Locals don't cry. Real locals don't cry. These ain't tears in my eyes. Pain in my heart. You can tell mama try. Yeah, it's cold on my side. Locals don't cry. Start. Let me turn off this music right quick. Steve. I'm going to go over here right quick. Let's see here. What's up? What's up, everyone? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh kick it off. Uh, um, we have some uh some some quick little announcements and just some breakthrough of what we're gonna go through today. Um, uh, but uh, uh, I would like to first start it off with introductions. What's up, everyone? I'm Ryan Flacco Rising. I'm the executive director of West Coast Credible Messengers. Um, today we got a special, uh, you know, celebration, uh, credible messenger certification party. Um, everyone that's on here today is going to be certified credible messengers at the end of this. Um, so without further ado, um, I'll pass it over to the homie uh, Spanky Loco, and I'll have him introduce himself, and 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 we'll kind of talk about what we've been up to. I'm going to show a little video to start us off as well, so you'll see a couple videos of the work that we've been up to. All right, Spanks. What's up, everybody? How you guys doing? Good, good, good. Buenos dias. Good. Yeah. I'm really excited to um to do the introduction to to the locals, the locals credible messenger. Um, I think Mom. I think everybody's uh Mom. wants to be familiar with the work. But um, we need like an introduction and we need that support. And I feel like this is the perfect way to uh -huh. to get that support and also to get the, I think, the basic knowledge of how to interact with youth, um, you know, how to 
how to use the tools available, how to use the tools available to better serve uh, each individual. So I'm Spanky. Currently, I'm in uh, I'm in Washington right now. We're running the, the nonprofit in Washington, originally from Los Angeles, from from California, and uh, and I feel like we go back and forth to 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 attempt to to lay the foundation. the The organization is in its infancy. We've just started this mission, but I feel like we're we're off to a good start. We got we got flock on board to give us a lot of knowledge and support us with deciphering uh i think the 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 culture and deciphering the lingo when it comes to getting when it comes to getting support in this um in this work because we can't do it alone and i feel like that's part of doing these certifications is validating the importance of what we bring to the table a lot of groups uh are represented and they're funded but but in all honesty, in all honesty, uh, the the you know we're 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 suffering from not being able to get the resources that everybody else is getting, mm. and that's our youth, and that's from serving our youth, being able to have facilities or workshop curriculums, you name it, the connection to higher education, like what Flock was doing, I mean, extremely crucial, you know, and and. The, pro the promotion of that is not very prevalent. So I think this will be something that's at the forefront. You know, we can always agree or work on projects that'll better serve the youth and better serve the community. You guys see Flock was in the, in the, he's in the juveniles and, um, and then I go into the juveniles as well. God bless. I just started going in and then been working with other, uh, other youth. So, I've been excited about about all those new changes and all those new, I think all those new revelations for, for the for the organization, you know, because you want to be relevant. You wanna you wanna do the work. You don't want to be like, hey, uh, I'm serving two people, you know. And so currently, 200, 200 kids weekly is what I'm working with, uh, and these are regular caseloads. I'm collecting the data for that, and so hopefully that'll help the, our whole situation. We can work on talking about bringing you homies to, to to Seattle, to Washington, so we could do the work. The same us going out, and so that's that's uh that's kind of a brief introduction to 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 where we're at and how 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 we've developed the program and where we're at in our in our in our stages developing with you fellas. So thank you for joining. That's what's up. Thank you, Spanky Loco. We appreciate that introduction. And uh, so I'll open it up. Uh, I'll, I'll popcorn it over to uh, uh, I see Chicha that goes on the line. Um, uh, to, we'll do a quick introduction. Uh, pretty much tell us, uh, you know, who you are, what you're up to, and what brings you to the training school today. Uh, gracias. Uh, my name is Chicha Goza. I'm a UC Berkeley student, um, currently in Santa Maria right now with a family. Um, I work in uh, San Francisco Juvenile Hall and Contra Costa Juvenile Hall, uh, working with the little homies, uh, which, is, which is cool, right? Everything that I'm learning with the Credible Messengers, I'm, I'm going up in there and, and showing these, these youngsters that, you know, that there's a different way, right? And, and you know, um, I don't know. I just find it fulfilling. Um, so I, I hope that I continue to learn from you guys and, and pass on this knowledge. Um, I'll pop a coordinate over to Adrian. Hi, everyone. Buenos dias. Good morning. Uh, first and foremost, it's a pleasure to be here with all of you. Uh, thank you for allowing me to share space. Definitely, um, I'm over here uh, currently at UC Berkeley, and um, I just started working with some of the young and homies uh, at the juvenile halls over at in Oakland, California, and uh, it's been a different trip, you know, to begin with. I uh, started doing this work thanks to the homie Cheech. When I first heard about the program, it was a, a, it was a different story just because 
it brought memories when I was where I was at when I was a, a juvenile. You know, I was young and really active and stuff like that. And uh, not to say that I'm not here glorifying the, the the gang lifestyle, but I'm not in bad standings in my neighborhood. But I'm just I, I'm not just out there posted up and doing dumb shit just because I'm currently in at, at a UC. Uh, but I'm saying that to say like it's different because the population up here they're all younger little northerners. So it was a different story. So when she started doing it, he had a great experience. So he started motivating me. And uh yeah, I started I got I got involved and it's been a different story. At first, I had a hard time, you know, some of these little kids they didn't want to shake my hand, they didn't want to talk to me, which I already expected it. And then eventually uh um, you know, having building connections. Um there was a Norteño up here named Danny that's going to to UC Berkeley as well. And I got, I got to connect with him after I found out that he's doing the program. So he started reaching out to the youngsters. They opened up to me. And um, then he was kind of like, I don't know if you guys heard that, license to operate, you know, and it's the same thing. You know, I was able to approach the proper channels when all the youngsters see that I'm there to help them all. You know, it's been it's been a good experience working with uh, um, African-Americans, Asians, Latinos, different kids, man. It's been a pleasure. I enjoy what I'm doing, and I'm a, I'm in the process of pursuing my PhD. With that uh, being said, I'll go ahead and I'll pass it to um, Alex. All right, everybody. Uh, my name's Alex. Um, huge thanks to Spanky for uh, introducing me off to you guys. Um, we've been kind of talking over it for quite a bit of time now. Um, you know, where I've been, you know, his biggest thing is just seeing how invested I am. And uh, I'm 110% invested into this. Uh, I grew up in Stockton, California, and uh, joined the Army and then ended up up in Washington. And uh, did two deployments overseas, um, lost some good friends. Uh, and now, you know, like this is, um, this mission for me is, it, this gives me purpose, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, growing up in Stockton, I don't know if, how many of you are familiar with Stockton, but it's a it's it's a rough place to be, and uh, probably not as rough as you know what some of you you know what other places that you guys have been, but uh, uh, it was tough, you know, and uh, so um, I definitely find it imperative, um, as a father myself, you know, for these for these kids to uh, these are these kids are going to be replacing us whenever we're dead and gone, so we got to make sure that we're providing them the best um, foundation for a future as possible. Um, I do got a lot of connections, uh, you know, within my area as far as state representatives and stuff like that, that um, me and Spanky are going to work on hopefully getting involved. Um, we got some meetings set up um, to try to get more exposure as time goes on. Um, we got our first meeting on the 22nd and uh of this month so we're just gonna keep on pushing um i told spanky my biggest thing is you know like as far as getting the funding and stuff like that we just you know push this out and um but make sure that we're getting people that are that are serious that want to help the kids involved and that's that's where i'm at so um i definitely am uh i'm blessed to be here i'm glad to uh glad to be surrounded by you guys and uh hopefully we can all you know make this uh make this a thing for the kids and, uh, you know, make some big things happen. And with that, uh, I'll go ahead and pass it off to Elijah. What's going on, everybody? My name is Elijah, but the homies call me Speedy. Um, I'm right here at UC Irvine, right here with Flocko, helping to build up the West Coast Credible Messages Program. I'm the regional director of Orange County. What brings me to this work is, is me be still, in, still in the streets and I see the, suffering me and other young homies go through. I see the homies getting locked up, making bad decisions, sometimes just because they're bored and got nothing to do. Um, sometimes just because they don't know what to do and it's the easiest route. Um, I move around a lot, so I see homies all, all different counties go through a lot of different struggles. And um, it's because I lost my brother in 2020 to gun violence. And then from there, it was kind of like a turning point, you know, not telling me that I'm not gonna rank it on my homies, but I'm gonna try to do something better to help us all in the future. 
So instead of going back to my hood and just handing out guns and going to get us all arrested, I want to go back to my hood and hand out jobs and give them back knowledge and, you know, show them what's up, show them how to take care of their families. We all got kids. And why should we all sit in a jail cell talking about our kids? And why can't we all work together and talk about our kids and show them the better way? I'm going to pass it on to uh, uh, Emmanuel. Buenos dias, mi gente. All right. I'm, uh, I'm Emmanuel Velez. Manny. I go by Manny. Um, I'm out here in uh, Bremerton, Washington, and so far I've been doing some of this uh, this work with Spanky, and it's it's been amazing. Um, I own a group home, and we service children with special needs. So for the children, it's always something that I've I've, I've been there to help push to help help these kids out any way that I can. And uh, some of these things that or some of these times that I have gone with Spanky, these kids, right? There was this time where um, we do a, a temperament check on the kids. How you feeling today? You know, on a one to 10, you know, and you, you see, you know, kids, I'm a 10, I'm a 10, I'm a three, I'm a one. And then, you know, okay. You start to notice and things like that. So I told them, Hey, I'm a 10, you know? So as it went by and just like no different than what was said here, right. It's, it's like a, it's like an onion peeling a layer back on each one of these kids, which was great. You know, some of them will look at you like, yeah, I don't know. But then they finally start to open up. They they hear your story and, and, they're, and they're good with it, right? After that that first session was done, right? I was like, I thought I was a 10. I was like, I feel like a 10 now. Now I know what a real 10 feels like because it felt good, you know, for them to be receptive on what I was saying or what I was helping them with. But um, I'm here for it, man. If we can help these kids, that's the main goal, I got children too, man. And I want, I, I want nothing for the best for mine. I want you guys to have nothing but the best for yours as well. With that being said, um, I'm going to pass it to, I, I believe, uh, Eric Flores. You haven't been there yet. Good morning. Thank you very much. How's it going, everybody? I'm Eric Flores. I uh, I currently stay up in uh, Bellingham, Washington. Um, I'm a board member for uh, New Freedom in Washington, and then at the same time, I'm a care coordinator with uh, Freedom Project out of uh, King County as well. Uh, I currently do you know one-on-one -on -one mentoring and whatnot with uh, individuals uh, that become my caseloads and stuff like that. And I'm just here in space, you know. I get sent the link over, and I just want to be, you know, in space with all you guys. Appreciate you guys. With that, I'm complete. And uh, I'm not sure who hasn't gone. I'll, uh, I'll pass it over. Toro. Thank you. Toro. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? I hear you, homie. Hey, uh, so uh, basically, uh, he showed me to this Gracias Paco for uh, giving me the invite to this meeting. I appreciate it. And uh, thank you. I watched a few of Spanky's videos, and I was just inspired. You know, uh, I spent a lot of years, you know, I'm from San Diego, California, Logan Heights. Spent a lot of years tearing down my community, and I want to get back to my community. I want to show these kids, like, some to take it on a ride that was off. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, uh, my big homie Sleepy is the one who shot me towards this, trying to open up a facility called uh, Nurse of the Sea. Right now, currently, I'm not in Dago. I'm in I'm in Nuevo right now. I'm working on the oil rigs, but I should be going back and forth with my homie on this literature and just trying to get educated on this. And like I said, I just want to give back to, to my community. I want to show these kids our future. This is our future right here. We gotta we gotta bring it up. If not, they're just gonna keep doing what we were doing in the circle and the cycle, and just don't stop. You know, I want to put stop to all that. Um, I don't know who's gone next. My, I've been messing up. What's up, uh, Alejandro? It's a little sneaks. What's up, y'all? Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Alejandro. Hold on, my bad. Kind of blurry. <laughs> but uh, yeah, good morning, y'all. My name is Alejandro. I'm an academic credible messenger. I go to school at UC Irvine. I'm pursuing my bachelor's degree. I'm right there with Flaco and Elijah. Um, originally, I'm from Boyle Heights. I also spent 
a lot of time growing up in the San Gabriel Valley, uh, specifically El Monte. Right here, I'm I'm in El Monte right now. I'm at my mom's pad. But um, for me, joining this program was started off like, you know, like everybody else is saying, trying to like help out the younger homies and stuff. But I think like for me, as time progressed, I had like some hiccups. So now like for me, it's it's like about holding myself accountable and really wanting to make the changes in my life necessary to live a better life for, for not only for me, but like for everybody that loves me and cares about me. Um, I was going into the juvenile halls at one point, but I haven't been able to go back because my schedule had changed with school and stuff. So I was like unable to make it on the day that I was going. And then the people at the juvenile hall ha were, hadn't reached out to me and stuff. So hopefully I'm able to go back because I actually really miss it, you know? At first, I was really nervous about it because I had never done anything like that before, like run workshop or nothing. But after some time, when you really get to like bond with the younger homies and stuff like that, I guess, it, you know, it, it goes a long way for everybody. Like they'd be waiting for you. Like, you know, you show up on a Monday or whatever, they'd be waiting on that Monday. So for me, it's like really, it's dope. You get to connect with everybody. And yeah, I feel like I'm just excited to be able to go back, hopefully. That's what's up. Gracias, little sneaks. And then I see Nitty joined us. Go ahead, Nitty. You, it's on you, my boy. What's the question? What's the question? I just hopped on. Man, just introduce your introduce yourself and what brings you to this work and like just the work you've been doing and and all that. Okay. Uh, my name's Nico, also known as Sleep Nitty. Uh, San Diego, born and raised. Um, I'm a uh, systematically impacted, socially impacted. And uh, here to do the work to uh, wake the young ones and even the adults that are just aren't aren't getting it, that are uh, you know victimizing themselves. Um, been out here really trying to kill it, get this West Coast Credible Messengers up and running in the uh, juvenile restoration um, justice system that they got going on, and um, just excited to be here and uh, hear what everybody has to share today. Thank you for letting me join. So so. All right, gracias, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, so we got a, a, a jam-packed agenda today. Um, I'm gonna go through a couple videos. Um, look, this is a this is a a, a knowledge producing place. Uh, the 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 Credible Messengers Training School, the Locals West Coast Credible Messengers Training School, is about producing knowledge together. So feel free at any time to unmute and 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 say what's on your mind. If you have questions, whatever comes to your mind or your heart in the moment, don't be afraid to unmute and say, "Hey, can I ask this?" or "Hey, can you expand on that?" Because this is what this place is about. It's about producing knowledge together. Uh, we're in community together. Um, and it's beautiful. It's beautiful to be with all of you leaders, with all of you who are out here trying to make a better uh, tomorrow for the next little homies that are coming up to have a better pathway than than what we had. And that's what it's about, being a credible messenger. So I'm going to start off with a, a, a video. And in this video, you'll see the work that uh, uh, Spanky has been doing with locals up there in Washington. Um, then I'll go through the first module, which is module one, which is the history of the Credible Messengers program. We'll take a little pause. We'll unpack that uh, whole entire uh, process and, and we'll process that information together. And then I'll show another video of the West Coast Credible Messengers work and what we've been doing out here in Cali. Um, and then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go into module two. Um, hopefully we could get through module three and four, but we'll see what we feel on time. Um, I know that everyone's time is valuable and 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 your time is gonna be all I care about today. I want to get us out of here by noon. Um, if we can get out of here before noon, um, I would like that too, because this is a Saturday with your guys' family. And so I appreciate you all taking time out of your days to be here to to catch this knowledge. Um, and the the main goal today is everyone that's on this line is gonna be certified credible messenger. You're gonna walk away understanding what we're up to what the mission is, what the vision is, and what the five-year plan is moving forward. Without further ado, um, if Spanky, if you have anything you would like to say before I start this video. Let's see here. Okay, cool.
Let me see real quick. Let me find this video. All right, here it goes. So this is Locals uh, website. You could go to uh, localsnonprofit.org. I'm going to show the video off of this website. Like, um, me personally, when they tell us that we have Spanky Local coming on the weekend, I be getting excited. Like, um, especially like when we do activities like painting and things like that. I'm a creative person. I like painting. I like doing all that. But just getting the knowledge that we get from the sun or the green, it's really... It's nice to know that like, a lot of us girls here, most of us, some of us, like, they can feel like what you're going through. Like, we've been through some of the things that you've been through. Like, we can relate to it. So, it feels like we feel normal because a lot of people around here are really, like, you know, like, they're good people. They haven't been through things like that. And then when we have somebody who's sort of like us, like, somebody who, you know, looks like us, then it feels more comfortable. It feels like we can make it in life, especially when we see an example like you. Like it gives us the motivation to that we could change. Like there's always a different route, different way out of any situations that we're going through. And that a lot of the things that you tell us, like um, just to be positive, and it reminds me a lot of resilience. Like you could do anything even when you're going through something. You always bounce back. Become the person you want to be in the future. Don't like backtrack or you know like just because you grew up in a certain area, certain people, you don't have to be like those people. You could be different. So as you can see, that's the work that's going on in the juvenile hall. And I'll open it up to uh to Spanky uh to talk about that work and share like what what, what that video and the impact and the art and everything that's happening right there in that video and uh and, and share this work with uh everyone on the line today. Thank you. For uh first and foremost, I I'm uh I'm like um I'm excited because it's a it's a well-rounded group. It's like a lot of it's like a lot of um I think a lot of a lot of knowledge from a lot of different perspectives. So I'm really excited about that. I think the more we can grow the network and the more we can stay in connection, um then we can easily I think collaborate even if we're uh in two different areas so that's the important part that i think we could use our wit and then um get creative when it comes to supporting supporting the project so yeah that's that's first and foremost is i'm happy to see a well a well-rounded group and potentially more i mean i get a lot more hits for a lot more people that want to be involved and i think it takes i think it takes you know this type of uh uh this type of connection and then also it's you know we got families everyone has responsibilities so it's it's a matter of when it ties into your schedule because also what i've noticed that if if you you know dive into it or if you're like man i'm going to i'm going to do this at all costs and you know you neglect other responsibilities or you know it's just i think it takes away from it takes away from 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 the journey too. So, I think what's important is being well rounded and and also not overextending ourselves and saying, "Hey, I could do this," or "I could do that." I could do a little bit of this and a little bit, a little bit of this is 
is a lot more than a whole lot of nothing. You know what I mean? So just the fact that we're able to connect and communicate, that's that's the major part because um, slowly we'll get into like what the demographic looks like out here where we're at. And then, of course, we know the issues back home. We know we know what's going on back home and how how we can collaborate. That's entirely up, up to us to to decipher, determine and kind of put together some initiatives. So as we go, um, please take notes. Uh, feel free to take notes, get a notepad, get your phone or um, the information is is vital as as Flaco has laid it out, and um, I think it it correlates with like knowing and understanding how to navigate, knowing how to conduct ourselves in a sense, knowing how to represent the work that we're doing uh, uh, fully, so that you get the most out of talking to a youth. It don't matter where you talk to the youth; you could bump into a youngster at a liquor store and be like, "Hey." You know, I ain't, I ain't got, I ain't got an ID to go buy you that beer, but check this out. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, I won't get you the beer, but I'm going to give you some knowledge and I'm going to give you some information and I'm going to give you my number, whatever it takes to kind of plant seeds, you know, to kind of just plant the seed. We can't, we're not changing overnight, but to plant the seed. And, um, I want to have the right tools is what I always figured. Like, I want to have the right tools. I want to know what to say. I want to be able to, you know, conduct myself the way I should in front of, in front of these youngsters, especially because they're absorbing everything. And maybe what, you know, what, what I do on the side is already going to grasp them and it's not going to be the best uh, uh, message when they're looking at rap and they're looking at all these things, but I feel like my actions, my actions is where I want to really put uh, the face of my brand. You know, yeah, we might do urban music and we might do prison art and we might do uh, low writing and tattooing. And yeah, every single one of them is criminalized, but I think it's, I think it's what you do also the impact you have culturally. And I think for me is using all of that the only resources I have to, 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 I think, finesse my youngsters and let them know that we could do better and we can create jobs and we can, you know, travel the world tattooing and we can create uh, uh, music labels and we can uh, work with our community to grow and to live and to build, right? I think that's the important part. The important message is to, to be self-sustainable, to, to be strong, to 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 infect your community with positivity, but the tools are important. The validation is important. When you got a a mesa like this, and you got gentlemen that can share a story, that can project the story, right, and that have a common goal and a direction, and it falls align and it falls and aligns with what the vision of the group. Uh, 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 you know, puts together. Then, by all means, I feel like we're fulfilling the the work that we that we've always wanted to do. Just didn't know how to do it. Now we got the tools. Now we got pamphlets. Now we got business cards. Now we got you know uh, uh, informational workshop material. Um, I mean, when you talk to people, it's not like you're pulling stuff out of your ass. You're you know, you have information that's extremely valid, you know, and it's valid for the, I think, the development of of the of the community we're serving, you know, we're the advocates of that. Um, recently, I got that position at the detention center and that was exciting. Now, it's been a month already that I've been going in. I go into all the pods right here in Tacoma. And uh, while I've been there, They've, you know, they're like, well, we're going to do a survey. We're going to have a survey and we're going to assess, you know, assess what you're doing. And I said, likewise, I'm doing my own survey. I'm assessing everything, too. And you're probably not going to like some of the information that I have for you. 
because I feel like the microscope could be on on both parties, you know what I mean? Like, you know, and I get it. They let a homie into the institution, so I commend them for that part. But now it's time to adapt and to adjust. And when you see that the cells are all smashed on and all dirty, full of gang writing and negative uh, subliminal messages, and now you're like trying to be crafty with the work. And now you're saying, okay, the reason we get together the reason we have these uh, 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 certifications, the reason why we bring our knowledge together and the know-how uh, is because that type of behavior is unacceptable. We can't allow uh, someone else's kid to, to live like that. But our own child, we want them in a nice, comfortable bed. We want them, we check the temperature, we check the windows to make sure the windows ain't open so that the draft don't hit them. We make sure that they got their socks on if it's too cold or, you know, we go above and beyond. So I don't, what I, what the question is, is do we allow behavior less than that for other children, especially we're in, when we're in the care of these children? So that's where we come in. And I feel like the knowledge and the connection and the network and the know-how, because then what we're going to do is this this information, this data that we assess and that we come together with and we share as a group. My partners in Oakland, right, that are visiting this institution, they're going to say, well, you know, according to our program, our certified program, we feel that there's a, an aesthetics, an aesthetics agreement. The cells cannot look less than this. The cells have to be clean for our youngsters. The cells have to be immaculate for them. The food has to be of nutrition. I mean, if we're if we're advocating, we're gonna use the tools to really say, hey, excuse me, no disrespect. No disrespect. I know I just got here. I know I just got here, no disrespect, but what do you think if we did this? And it probably looked really good on you as a supervisor, you know, that we're being humane with the kids. And we'll come in and help out and figure out how we can support with that part of it. And then maybe, maybe what we can do is we come up with an agreement, like the agreement to end all hostilities. And as all the little homies receive this agreement, it says, here on number eight, we will not destroy the pattern. We will not destroy the cell. We will not invite negative behavior into the unit. I mean, all these things that outline that 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 create this new culture now. That create this new culture, but it takes the mesa and it takes, I think, being innovative and coming up with ideas for new times and new cultures and new new forms of banging. You know what I mean? Like the kids are getting younger now. The offenders are becoming younger, which means the respect level is a lot lower, you know, at an all time low. So I think having these tools and saying, hey, supervisor, these are tools that work because we already we already um, introduced this to to Tacoma facility, Washington facilities, um, you know, I think we need to introduce them here and now we're creating now we're creating a a pattern, a pattern of positive behavior with the tools that we have. And that's I think the end goal to make to make impacts. We're making an impact, but collectively, imagine the impact that we can do. Co collectively, now you're like, okay, well, I'm not by myself in this. These are the findings. My group finds that, this, that, and the third, and you have the tools and the means to to provide this information, to validate everything, all our conclusions, right? All our findings. So motherfuckers ain't like, where he come up with that? You know? It's an experience. Yours, ex your experience, my, all of ours collectively. And then, of course, the works that we're doing inside. And like Manny said, engaging with the youth and peeling the onion back and seeing what's what and what's afflicting him and who's afflicting you and and what can we do with the with the staff that's better even saying like 
in Oakland introducing the locals West Coast Credible Messenger program and saying, hey, I'd like to do a, a staff certification. Flaco and myself have talked about this, like a partnership certification. That way, these other orgs that are promoting uh, that are promoting the lifestyle and saying they they're cohesive with the lifestyle and understand it to to be able to serve the community we can weed that out because really we're talking about groups that are working with law enforcement groups that are working with agencies that don't understand the young mind and don't understand the tools right like this stuff is very sensitive this stuff is very sensitive. A any 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 misinformation could really throw your relationship into a different into a different place, you know. And mistrust is a big thing with the youth. Mistrust is a huge thing. So you know how it is. You gotta follow up on everything. Everything you say, you gotta deliver on, because then it's like okay. The trust that we're building, I'm about to break it just by not following up or just by not delivering. And I feel like these are the things that are, that are a matter of delivering, right? Is also success, the success, the success within the institution to be able to correlate with them and the success with the youngsters to be able to serve them. And then have the data for that and say, hey, this guy got out and graduated. This guy did really well while while he was in here and moved those credits on to where he needed to go or that guy's out there and we were able to get him a job job placement or we have a job fair for tattoo artists all the tattoo artists we know we're we're taking them uh you know to a convention i mean we we have the ability to be crafty you know we have the ability to use the unorthodox tools like graffiti and tattooing and music and use all of that, the limited tools that we've, that we've had in the hood, right? And use that to do some amazing things because now those tools are up here. Now they're huge uh, 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 parts of the culture. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Any questions, anything else that, I feel like you guys could interject with from your side, from your perspective, maybe something that you're lacking, an initiative that you'd love to see happen, things that you would love to to initiate or connect. Um, the program, we're back into the swing of things. We're back into the swing of things. Um, for a minute, we're formulating a way and figuring things out and getting things more validated as we've come across these new connections with, you know, county officials, uh, uh, state officials. And by all means, we got a couple of uh, contracts under our belt right now. God bless. Let's make this let's make this uh, uh, more concrete. Let's bring in more people that are like minded. Let's offer this opportunity to more people. Let's work with people that 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 understand the work and want to be part of the work, but are hindered because they're connected to homies, because they're a part of this culture that systemically, I mean, we fall right into it, right? Fell right into it. So instead of feeding the homies neg negative information, negative behavior, let's offer them the tools. Let's invite them and bring them on board. Let's get it. That's what's up. Thank you. Gracias. So without further ado, that's a good segue into what we're about to speak about. So I want to go through the history of credible messengers. Um, this is not some concept that, you know, uh, we create just created out of thin air. There's a there's a long history um, that goes back into the 1930s. And uh, and and so we've been dealing with violence in our communities. We've been dealing with with all of this stuff, uh, you know, for centuries. And uh, and so uh, I'm going to go through the overview of the Credible Messengers program. So we already did our welcome and our introduction. And uh, now it's time to learn about the overview of the Credible Messengers work. So. The Credible Messengers movement represents a transformative approach to mentoring and community intervention. 
designed to reduce recidivism and address social challenges, particularly among youth and marginalized groups. It distinguishes itself by leveraging the experiences and knowledge of in individuals who have lived through and overcome the same struggles as those they mentor. Rather than relying on traditional authority figures, our mentors from outside the community, credible messengers are individuals from within, often formerly incarcerated gang-involved individuals um, whose shared experience make them uniquely positioned to connect with those who are out in the streets, who are out in the lifestyle. Um, in the 20th century, uh, programs like New York City's uh, um, uh, We've seen like how this program has been co-opted by, you know, uh, uh, probation. And, but the definition of a credible messenger is is that person with lived experience that's that's formerly uh, uh, incarcerated, that's gang involved, that has the credibility to go back into the neighborhood and uplift those in the neighborhood um, and show them in the neighborhood pathways to success. And that's what we're all doing showing them that we can no longer go on legitimizing this system in place. The system in place, this legal system, has continuously sucked billions of dollars of our tax revenue away from our communities, driving us deeper and deeper into poverty. So I want to look at the origins of, the, of this credible messengers concept. Um, so... We'll take it back to the 1930s. I think this is important. The 1930s, um, one of the earliest precedents for the credible messengers approach. Um, you saw that through the Chicago area project, which introduced curbside counselors. These were often young adults who shared life experiences with the youngsters in the neighborhood, um, acting as both role models and mediators. Um, CAP was a, a groundbreaking attempt to build social cohesion within these communities, emphasizing um, how positive role modeling from these individuals with the same lived experience from the community could influence social change could introduce social transformation. And that's what Spanky was just talking about, this transformation. How do we transform the narrative of gangbanging? Where instead of gangbanging on each other, we now come together, we uplift each other, we inspire each other, and we turn around and we gangbang on this system. This system that has driven us deeper and deeper into poverty, that has used us as pawns in their schemes, that has continuously stepped on us and oppressed us. So I, I kind of want to talk about restorative justice compared to transformative justice. Restorative justice is about you taking full responsibility of your actions, but it misses something. It misses the oppression that exists in our communities, the systemic oppression that exists in our communities that causes us to act, that causes us to respond. Remember, we're human beings. And as human beings, we have an internal system. And then in this internal system, we have defense mechanisms, our bodies, such as tattooing. When you get a tattoo, your body... All the receptors shoot to that one area to protect that area, and it swells up. And that's the way the body protects itself. Well, that's the same thing with when you see something going on. We have a response system, and this response system is fight, flight, or freeze. This is important because as we deal with systemic oppression, we respond to it. And the way we respond to it is in these categories, which is fight, flight, or freeze. A lot of us chose to fight it, to, to fight it, to, to band together. And what did the system do? The system responded by socially constructing labels to demonize us trying to fight off the oppression that the system was forcing upon us. And they labeled us all gang members. This social la constructed label was used for profit and extracted millions upon millions of dollars of profit underneath this pretense of serving and protecting the community where they produced this moral panic, 
this moral panic around these these gangs inside the city, these these gangs that are violent. And they socially constructed that through the media, through uh, multiple political campaigns. Um, they built this up, but it was all a scheme to get profit. It was for profit. And that profit was then put inside this legal system and this law enforcement agency system, this probation system. And it built out all these individuals' careers. And so it was a careerist move. And it was a careerist maneuvering that, that shaped our oppression even further. Now we're labeled gang members. Now they're able to uh, lock us up. They're able to jump out of their police cars and, 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 and throw us against the wall. They're able to continue this mass oppression. So here we are deconstructing de this label that's been stacked against us to oppress us further, to keep us as outliers in this, uh, you know, this capitalist system within the United States. And we were forced to survive by any means necessary. So I'm going to speed this up because I was talking about restorative justice versus transformative justice. Now, restorative justice says you need to take responsibility for your actions. You need to be restoring your your your, you know, yourself back to the community. But it leaves out oppression. And that's where transformative justice comes in. Transformative justice, it's centered around recognizing the systemic oppression that all of us are facing. And this systemic oppression causes us to respond. And when we respond, we respond in ways we probably never would have if we didn't have this oppression in our communities. So transformative justice is what West Coast Credible Messengers aligns with. And that's what locals aligns with. We're about transforming. We're recognizing this oppression. And we're recognizing that we need to give all of our communities, all of our neighborhoods, the tools to overcome this oppression without legitimizing this system that's producing this oppression in order to get profit off of our responses. So the way we respond is what actually legitimizes this system in place, this legal system, this scheme. And so we responded with violence. They then maximized the moral panic around violence. These people are violent. We responded by grabbing whatever we could, whatever means was available to us to produce profit. We did in order to survive, right? So we found drugs. And guess what? They, you know, they put a, uh, you know, policy and, and, and legal code around uh, making drugs unlawful. All these things, uh, the system has produced profit off of our responses to the oppression that it's that it's creating. So transformative justice is where we lie. Um, so the Chicago area project was done in the 1930s. We had curbside counselors. These counselors would be on the curb. And, and, and you know, in, in our time in the 90s and even today, you're kicking it on the curb. Police are going to come and harass you. But back then, these individuals posted up on the curb to, to you know, uh, to really like bring down the violence to really be there for people that were experiencing, you know, the responses to the oppressive state of their community. Then you had the street club project, which, you know, came up in New York City, was initiated um, to address the rising of, of, of all these groups in the community banding together. Um, it was a way to reach out to them and, and, and to really get agreements to end all hostilities, to really bring down the violence. As long as we are being violent towards one another, we're going to continuously lose millions of dollars that is going to go into these law enforcement budgets, that's going to go into this probation budget, that's going to go into this prison industrial complex that exists across the whole entire United States. So we got to come up with mechanisms and put new mechanisms in place where we don't go towards violence because violence is what legitimizes that that system that extracts millions of dollars what we're trying to do with the credible messengers is we're trying to get that that those billions of dollars that have been extracted away to inflate these law enforcement budgets back to our communities as you guys know uh you know when you go to downtown uh wherever you're at um, all we see is people living in tents. Why? 
why are all these people living on the streets? It's because these systems are, uh, you know, siphoning all this money away from us. And the only way we're going to be able to come together is we got to build the Credible Messengers Army. And that's what we're doing right now. We're building out this Credible Messengers Army that's going to go out there and support and, and quit the legitimization of this disgusting system that's for-profit extraction, that's labeling us, that's demonizing us, that's keeping us oppressed. So I want to take it a step further because it, it, in the 1970s, the Black Panther movement and the Brown Berets, these were very, very, um, uh, you know, politic, political agencies that were given political education to their communities. They stood up to the oppression. And of course, you know, the government came hard down on them, you know, uh, COINTELPRO ensued, a lot of the Black Panther leadership was locked up on trumped up charges. Um, and, and you know, we started to uh, 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 see them break down these movements. Um, but there was one individual named Eddie Ellis. Eddie Ellis was incarcerated um, in New York, and, and uh, he was incarcerated on trumped up charges. He was a, a Black Panther. Um, they rounded up the Black Panther Party in, in, in New York. Um, he got out of prison. But while in prison, he started to run political education classes, and he started to recognize the influence that individuals in prison had out in their communities. Um, and he started to see this as, as, as a powerful um, influence that could influence positivity and influence transformation. When he got back out to the community, he continued to do the Black Panther work and he continued to work in his community. And he saw these individuals coming back from prison that the youngsters really looked up to him. The youngsters were influenced by these individuals coming home from prison. And so he said, I need your guys' help. These youngsters will not come to uh, participate with our Black Panther work. They won't participate in feeding the community. They won't participate in any of the services that we're doing. And, and, and instead, they're resorting to violence. They're resorting to disruptive things that's bringing a lot of heat down. Um, could you guys step in as credible messengers? And that's where the word was coined. Eddie Ellis coined credible messengers. Now, it was a, a a Black Panther like program that these credible messengers started to go out and influence the youngsters, and uh, and and so this this concept came to life. This 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 term came to life through Eddie Ellis. Now, fast forward a little bit more. Um, it was then co opted by the probation. Probation departments of New York co-opted this and they saw like they see everything like they saw, oh, we can make profit from this. So you had arches and and you had probation take this concept that was created, which and, and, and I'll let you know, the Black Panthers and the Brown Berets created a lot of amazing programs. And I'll tell you right now that um, a lot of those programs were stolen by these by these systems like the school system. They didn't ever feed the kids in school. They didn't give them breakfast and lunch. That was a program that the Black Panthers ran for the youth, and actually it was stolen by the government and inserted into the school system. Um, you know, And so here we are, we have this credible messengers concept, this credible messengers program developed, and uh, probation sees this as a new way to socially control and to socially surveil individuals by using their peers. So they didn't have it in their mind like Ellis had it, where it was the community coming together to uplift the community that that wasn't woke yet, that wasn't there. It didn't have a consciousness raising. So probation stole this concept and they created this new surveillance program, which was a credible messengers program and arches. Um, you know, I, I, there was some success there, um, but with probation, it's all about money. So there was a lot of failures there, too. Um, a lot of this became, uh, you know, uh, people from the community became leery about it, like, ah, I don't trust it. So what we're doing is bringing it back to its roots, where it's us from the community, separated from law enforcement, separated from probation, separated from all these entities that use us as commodities, that use us for profit. 
we're bringing it back to that. Um, we can no longer stand by and let probation suck billions and millions away from our community. Enough's enough. We need to get it back to our community. We need to get our, our community um, in, in sync together as one. Um, we need to bring back unity in community. And I always say that. So the evolution of the of the credible messengers, uh, that that's the history of it. And here we are today. And this is happening today. There's programmed right now that are taking money from probation and calling themselves credible messengers, um, taking money from law enforcement and saying they're the bridge to law enforcement. Um, they're out here in Cali. There's a few programs that are, you know, uh, really aligning themselves with the system. And 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 that's where we we draw the line. We're not aligning ourselves with the system. We're going to go in and help the individuals that the system has entrapped and oppressed and and is is violating right now. Uh, we'll get in there and we'll help them. But we're not going to stand by and let them oppress them any longer. And we're also not going to take your dirty money and 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 be controlled by you and 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 be used by you uh to continue to prop yourself up and legitimize yourself to extract more money into your bank account we're not going to stand by and do it so the impact and importance of the credible messengers in communities credible messengers hold a unique uh place in and model uh, modern social interventions addressing the root causes of crime and working directly with individuals who are out in these communities, who are legitimizing these systems and responding to this oppression that exists inside the community. They, we serve as living examples of transformation that we're no longer going to stand by and legitimize this system in place. We're no longer going to bang bang on the next homie that's that's dealing with the same exact uh, 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 that's su suffering that we're suffering. We can't do it. We there's no law. We can no longer do that. We can no longer uh, 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 go after people who are equally suffering the same as we are. We need to become one in solidarity. And and so um, what we're doing now is we're showing up and we're telling them like we we gotta have an agreement to end all hostilities. As long as there's violence, they got money coming to them for going out and and continuing this mass oppression against us. Um. So. We serve as living examples of this transformation, proving that positive change is possible even in the face of difficult life circumstances. By offering guidance, mentorship, and emotional support, credible messengers play a crucial role in one, reducing recidivism. Once we all realize that we're responding to oppression, once we all realize the systemic oppression that exists around us, we then figure out mechanisms and ways to not fall into the traps of it. And instead of resorting to violence, instead of resorting to dealing dope, instead of resorting to uh, tearing down our communities, we resort to ways to uplift our communities and build our communities up. And, and within this building of our neighborhoods that we love, all of us come from our barrios and we love our barrios so much. It's a time to get out there and, and reclaim our barrios, reclaim our, 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 our communities and build our communities up. And when we do this and we quit this legitimization of this disgusting system, this for-profit legal system that's, that's continuously oppressing our communities, we will reduce recidivism. Credible messengers help reduce the likelihood of reoffending by providing individuals who are formerly incarcerated with the tools and strategies to reintegrate into society. We offer emotional and practical support that extends beyond the traditional scope of these disgusting probation offices that extract millions of dollars away from our uh, communities. I mean, What's going on in Los Angeles? I, I know a few of you are from the area and understand. Oh man, the 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 way probation has 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 been treating the youngsters for decades now, um, it's disgusting. And 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 finally, uh, some some of it's coming to light. And uh, you know, uh, we've been able to fight and come together and and dismantle the Department of Juvenile Justice here in California. 
the Department of Juvenile Justice um, was disgusting. The way they treated us, the way they 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 de destroyed our spirits, um, the youth authorities, the violence that they uh, you know um, put in front of us and and put us all through um, was disgusting. And the tra the trauma that we've all experienced from going through that system um, has impacted our lives and, and the trajectory of a lot of uh, of individuals who are in the prison system of California. California right now that went through that disgusting system. So one thing that we do as credible messengers, we build trust and we build social cohesion. As individuals from the same communities that we serve, um, we are able to build trust with those who might not otherwise be skeptical of outside uh, authority figures. Look, let's keep it real here. Uh, the, the 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 law enforcement, the probation, the the mass, the the port, department of corruption, corrections, or whatever they call it, it hasn't done nothing for our communities. It hasn't kept any of us safe. As a matter of fact, it's it's actually made our communities worse in a lot of different ways, in a lot of different sense, you know. And uh, as we look around and we see everyone living on the streets in tents, um, those people have frozen. They're they're frozen. So like I said, fight, flight, freeze. Why? Right? So how are these individuals uh, responding to the oppression that exists in their communities? They're freezing. They're popping a tent. They're saying, I'm not I'm not going to entertain this anymore. Um, and, and others have flighted it. They flighted it by working three jobs or they flighted it by building out their own system. You know, we built our own system of survival. And that system's been demonized by this legal system for more money to go to that legal system. So empowering individuals this is the key component this piece right here is the key component empowering individuals one of the greatest strengths of credible messengers of west coast locals credible messengers approach is its ability to empower individuals those who have lived through hardship can turn their experiences into positive social capital Offering hope and guidance to others who are facing similar challenges. And this way, our credible messengers model not only aids individuals, but also strengthens communities as a whole. And then per changing perceptions of what is justice. Like I said, restorative justice, right? Yeah, we, we did have action. We did do some harm. Yes, but we have to look at the roots, uh, the underlying roots of where that harm stems from. And that's where these systems fail. These systems fail to look at the oppression that exists, the systemic oppression that exists in every aspect of our journey in life. Every aspect we are groomed through school. Each system is is producing this this oppressive state, this mental state within each individual that it crosses. So the credible messenger approach shifts the focus from punishment to rehabilitation, offering an alternative vision of justice that emphasizes healing, reconciliation, and collective empowerment. This is especially crucial for marginalized communities that have historically been over-policed and underserved by the traditional uh, criminal legal systems that, you know, have uh, produced nothing but profit for themselves, um, nothing but profit for their houses and their kids to go to college while all of ours have suffered. So through its focus on transformation, the Credible Messengers uh, movement offers a vision of true transformative justice that is restorative rather, rather than punitive, strengthening communities from within by empowering those who have lived through adversity to lead the way toward positive change. That's us. That's all of us on this call today. So pretty much what I wanted you to understand with this first module is I wanted you to understand um, the historical development of this credible messengers movement, this credible messengers concept, where it came from. I think that's very important as we embrace this and and and, and understand the history of it. 
We can understand how it's been manipulated by these systems, how some people um, even embrace it as a way to produce their own profit for themselves. Um, uh, you know, and 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 that's another thing I want to highlight is there's some folks that are calling themselves credible messengers, but have this distorted outlook on what it means to be a credible messenger because they've never been schooled. They've never got this training. And so what we're saying is, as locals, uh, credible messengers, as West Coast credible messengers, if you don't get this training right here, you can't call yourself a credible messenger. If you don't have the credibility to go back in your community and influence transformation, then you're not credible. Um, there's a lot of folks uh, who've identified themselves for profit as former gang members. Now, look, homies, I'm, I'm going to put it to you like this. This gang label was socially constructed against us to, to build profit, to extract profit away from our hoods into these law enforcement budgets. They inflated their budgets. I mean, their budgets go up, you know, in the billions. I mean, Los Angeles uh, uh, Sheriff's Department, the LAPD takes in almost 75 percent of our budget of Los Angeles. That's disgusting. And, and and they do nothing. They do nothing. They just drive around and oppress us, drive around and, and use scare tactics to destroy our people, destroy our communities. So what we're saying is get that money back to the community. Get that back to our communities. Get that back to our people. Let's build our people up. Let's develop programs. Let's develop, um, you know, uh, uh, ways where we can get upward mobility. And there's a lot of folks um, that are out there calling themselves former gang members that are, oh, I'm a former gang member. Look, I'm going to put it to you like this. I've never met a homie who identifies themselves as I'm so-and-so and I'm a gang member. I've always met homies that say I'm so-and-so and I'm from I'm from my neighborhood. And they always put their neighborhood right there. Like I'm from uh, I'm from uh, Montebello. I'm from, you know, so they're always putting their community right there. The only time I've seen gang member be used is by law enforcement, um, by probation, um, and by former gang members. And you know what I found out about these former gang members that identify themselves as former gang members? They work for probation. They work for law enforcement. They work for the university. Um, they identify themselves as a former gang member to get profit for themselves not for their community not not get the wealth back to their community it's 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 for themselves and so uh um i've seen a lot of uh a lot of what i've identified as this gangland trope story stuff going on where these individuals pop up and say they're credible messengers and i've been shot four times and and i put it down and this and that and i and now i'm a former gang member and i'm doing this x y and z for my community they ain't doing shit you know what I'm saying? It's just a hoax, just a way, a new way to get some profit from the system. Probation likes to work with these types of individuals, not realizing these individuals are just saying they're former gang members just to get the money. Money comes, money goes, legacies live forever. And so I really want to emphasize that with all of you. Like money's going to come doing the doing work. We've got money in the streets. We know how to go out and get money in the streets. Money going to come, money's going to go. Legacies live forever. And that's what we're about. We're about building legacies. We're about investing in people's legacies. We're about investing in the long term of our hoods and, and really uh, uh, making sure that the righteous people are going back to help our neighborhoods, that they're not going back to just produce new uh, amounts of profit for themselves to take care of themselves. We need to quit falling into this trap, this scheme against each other, where we're out to try to get a, a little bit more. It's like this uh, this analogy, the crabs in the bucket, where the crabs trying to step on the rest of the crabs to get out of the bucket. You know what? It's time to reach that down, build a ladder and bring everyone out of that bucket because we've been stuffed in this bucket, being oppressed in our communities by these systems that have used this uh, false narrative, this false pretense of serving and protecting us. Enough's enough. We can't stand by anymore. We can't legitimize them anymore by carrying out violence, by doing all the things that they've been able to produce profit off of to take care of their families and destroy ours. So, yeah, so that's what's up. That's the first module. Does anybody have any questions, anything they want to 
you know, uh, share your thoughts. Like, I, I want to hear your thoughts. What does a community without violence look like? That's a question for you. And how can we break cycles of violence in our communities? What's up, Flaco? That was solid. Every bit of that information that you put right there, man, it it's out there. That really helped us out. Another like a, a thing. Well, what I like to use with the kids, right? When I talk to these kids, I'm a crisis management trainer, right? I'm a crisis management trainer for the state of Washington. So just a little thing that I like to do with these kids, you know, is I tell them our brain, our brain is built up. I, I spoke with Spanky about this too. Our brain is built up of like 30 billion, 30 billion neurons are in our brain, right? And they all know the same pathway that we all go through, right? Now, in order to create new pathways, we got to do things that are different. This is what I tell the kids, you know, instead of using your right hand to brush your teeth, how about you start using your left hand, right? Or I tell one of the kids, they, they were they were coloring in. I was like, how about this? How about you start using your other hand to color in some of the stuff, right? So the kid's like, hmm, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't feel right. I was like, you see what I'm talking about? You just got your brain off of thinking other things that you were thinking about while you were doing that to being honed in on what's going on with this right here to get your left hand to put this on the paper. I was like, little things like that start to do, start to create new pathways for our brain. Right. Because you were also talking about, you know, fight, flight or freeze. Right. That uh, that right there, a part of our brain is called the amygdala. Now, we're talking with children that have trauma. Right. Now, the amygdala is a fight, flight or freeze. But children with a lot of trauma, the amygdala gets a lot bigger, which in return, we have another thing, a part of our brain called the hippocampus. Now, the hippocampus is what gets us to be like, OK, let me assess the situation of what's going on. But if the amygdala is too big to the point, there's no you're not using the hippocampus. Right. It's all fight, flight or freeze, you know, freeze, flight. Or, that's what it is. And that's kind of like what I'm trying to help. Like little things that tell these kids is like, OK, do that instead of when you wake up in the morning. How about you wake up on the other side of the bed or how about like I said, I even told one of the kids, hey, you might wipe your ass with your right hand. How about you try your left? Just try something different, you know, start creating new things for them. Cool. Yeah, no, thank yeah, you for that. You yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, that, that's solid right there. You know, the brain is, it's, 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 it's special, you know what I'm saying? And um, it's important to realize that we can be programmed. And and that we have been programmed, you know, and 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 so I'm glad you bring that up, you know, because um, what we've experienced in our upbringing is we've been programmed by this outside influence within school, without with this outside influence with movies. Um, there's an agenda that's been pushed on us. Um, for instance, if you look in 1980s, um, 86 is when they came out with. Uh, they came out with the uh, RICO Act and they came out with the gang injunction in 1986. It was the 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 step act, right? Um and uh and this step act actually was produced right around afterwards they produced colors, the movie colors. Now I want to take it to what was the most uh biggest uh um recruitment movie for the military the big the, the it was the biggest recruitment mechanism for the military was what it was top gun top gun when top gun came out everyone wanted to go in the military they you that was a recruitment tool so then when colors came out that was a new recruitment tool for an agenda that they had this agenda was we're going to produce this gang label and we're going to socially construct out this gang label. So what they started to do was demonize culture and criminalize culture. By the 1990s, we started to see new movies come to life. And this was a part of their agenda. American Me, Blood In, Blood Out, Menace to Society, Boys in the Hood. 
These were all movies that were, were, were being built to continue to develop this whole agenda that was underneath us, that was actually uh, working to oppress us for profit. And what ended up happening, they started to, the researchers started to get involved with it at the university. They started to research it. They came up with theories like the super predator theory, where they were calling all these individuals super predators, not realizing that this was all a plan. This was a plan to produce profit. And in California, they built 33 prisons in 12 years. 33 prisons, the prison, it, it was it was all by design. And the reason why they designed it and went after it was because they had all of our factories, all of our stuff was shipped overseas for pure profit for the ritualing elites. So they shipped all this over. And what ended up happening was a lot of our families, a lot of other families from the marginalized communities lost their jobs. They lost their livelihoods to take care of their families because all the factories got ripped out of L.A. and sent overseas. And, and, and it was for profit. And there was a surplus humanity. And this surplus humanity was actually a revolutionary group. There was revolution potential there. What did they do? They needed to create something in order to extract this surplus humanity into prison or into a way to socially control them. Because uh, if they didn't, there was a threat of revolution in the United States. And that's what they did. And that's why we, you know, by 2008, when the financial collapse hit, there was 2.9 million people incarcerated, predominantly from marginalized, impoverished communities. It was these individuals that they went and plucked out and extracted away, calling them gang members, calling them essential threats to, uh, you know, the the system um, that they went and extracted away, which in all reality uh, extracted away a lot of leadership, a lot of potential, a lot of um, upward mobility potential, a lot of things, you know, was extracted away from us underneath this. And so, yeah, so it's important to really uh, hone in on the brain and hone in on all these mechanics that have actually shaped this oppression and 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 it, and it was all for profit it was all a way to get that profit into uh law enforcement get that profit into probation get, it was all for profit um and uh and we were just pawns we were being used as pawns and they pinned us against each other um, they dropped drugs in our neighborhood. They dropped guns in our neighborhood. And they knew that violence was going to proceed because they knew that we were strained, that we were all experiencing immense strain because of the poverty and the conditions we were in and experiencing from the state of oppression that was upon us. They knew we were going to respond with violence. They knew we were going to respond by banding together and selling the drugs they were letting come into our neighborhoods. They knew it. And uh, and even if you even look at like Sackler and, and you look at even the pill problem, the pill epidemic that we are, you know, ex that we experienced with uh, Vicodin and, and Oxycontin, you know what I'm saying? Like they opened up, you know, all these pharmacies and, and was letting all that shit come out because it, it fueled strength, it fueled strain and that strain would produce violence, would produce crime that then they could say, we need more money. We need millions millions more uh, to build out task force and all this stuff, you know? Um, so yeah, now nah, that's a, that's super important to speak on. Anybody else want to chime in? I saw, uh, I saw the homie had his hand up. Where's he at? Oh, Cheech, I saw your hand up. My bad, bro. Yeah, no, that's good. Eh? Um, so yeah, you're impacting a lot of stuff, um, you know, which is really informative, right? And, and what I see going on here in my community is, these these school systems right are are trying to take something that i started right by going into these juvenile halls now they're saying that we can't go in they got to go in as as a school right and and they want us to give a give them all our contacts and, and nah nah it don't work that way right um and you know it, it's hindering the the progress that that we're making with these individuals, these, these, these youngsters that look forward to what's going in there. Now they're saying we can't go in there. And um, so I just reached out to the probation officer about three weeks ago, right? Still no contact, still no response, right? Like it, it's 
I wanted her to explain what was the reason behind this, right? Why why is it only the community college to go in there? We can't go in there. So you know that's what I'm 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 seeing that that these these institutions are are using it for profit, right? They're going up in there. All this money is going down to this Rising Scholars Network, and they ain't doing shit. Right. We're the ones doing the footwork. We're the ones reaching these kids. We're the ones that they're keeping it real with them. Right. Because of our lived experience, not because of these people that are all professional and go up in there and saying, oh, you got to do this. You got to do that. Like we don't we don't tell the kids that. Right. We go like, check it out. If you want to learn how to roll up your mattress and do burpees at five in the morning, we got you. Right. But if you want a new way of life and higher education, we got you. But the choice is yours, right? When these kids start realizing that they have a choice, that changes the perspective. Like, oh, shit, you're right. right? We could do it this way or we could do it that way. And whatever way you choose, I ain't mad at you, right? Because I love this lifestyle that I lived. I just love the life I'm living today even more. And when they hear these different perspectives, that really reaches them. Right. And, and, you know, like Spanky was talking about collecting all this data on how they collect it on us. Right. About what, what are we doing when we go into the juvenile halls? What's the juvenile halls doing to these kids? Right. Because when I go up in there, you know, like it, it's different because I'm from Southern California and I'm going to Northern California. Right. So uh, right away, these kids are a little standoffish, but they continually see me going in every week every week and little by little they're shaking my hand hey buenos dias cheech like how's it going like it, it's really fulfilling it, it's it, you know that that like warms my heart like hey check it out hey eh? like look if you guys continue to come back right commit these crimes and come back you're putting that that guy over there or his kids through college right and and they get a different perspective and and so I think this work is really important. And and I would just like to like collaborate more, right? On on how can we implement this West Coast critical yeah. messengers here in, in Santa Maria, right? Going yeah, into the home making an extremely valid point. I think I think individually we can only do as much as we can. So with with you know, with all the tools, hopefully that we can project and put together. And manifest, um, then maybe it's just an added support. And then not only will you have yourself sending in emails and making calls, but we'll help you do follow ups as well. So we'll talk about what that support looks like and how we can assist in opening up the doors and creating the pipeline to go in and do the work and vice versa, vice versa, because. Because we need people here too. Here, here, here in um in Washington, we need we need the support from you know from from the group that understands that understands the 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 need and understands um also the demographic. So so if it comes down to you know having to having to you know having to come down and and speak to the youth and having to come and influence the youth and having to come into the institutions out here, by all means, I mean, like uh, the opportunities are still there. I feel like we just need to better, better yeah. collaborate to, to, to widen the, to widen the, the, to widen the, the pipeline to be able to, to break through to the institutions. I think if we, you know, formulate game plans and have agreements and agreements of nonviolence and all these things that we can talk to our youngsters about. And then, and then also have incentives, you know, um, come in with art, have art, have art projects to come in with and, um, you know, have the recording studio that we can come in with, um, do a couple speakings, have some guest speakers come in. I mean, you know, we gotta be innovative. We got to be innovative with the tools that we got. So I think it was an extremely valid um, question because we all feel we all feel like we need the support. I don't think it's just one 
one person, I think everyone wants to do the work intensively and get, and dive in. And it's like, man, where do we start? You know, if we're kind of limited to what we can do, so we can we can always we can always um better explore that to get the best impact with that situation. And that's gonna take that's gonna take a few meetings, and it's gonna take a little bit of communication. But you know, um, don't lose hope and don't don't. Don't get uh, frustrated um, visibly to where the connection is lost. And, you know, it's easy to say, like, oh, you got a lot of passion. But, you know, passion means threat, really, is what they mean. So be careful with some of the words that they use with you. You know, don't let them trick you. When they say, oh, you're really passionate about this work, you know, be very careful with how they word your behavior. You know, and at the end, be patient, you know, leave it in God's hands and and do the best and and the best will come, you know, the best will come. So let's be hopeful. And, and some this. other ideas too to assist you, Cheech, like we're all in, bro. Like uh, you, you could say you're with locals and West Coast Credible Messengers all day, every day up there. Um, you know, uh, another suggestion would be to get some testimonials from the youth inside the facility and build yes. out like a testimonial book. Um, that's something that all of us should be doing, even in the facilities that you guys are in right now. You should have a testimonial book where they they do some writing and you put the prompts up. How has uh, us coming in this facility impacted you? And they write about it and they write a whole testimonial and 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 they and you take those and you you put them in a book, a little booklet. And then that's a booklet that you shop over to these people. Um, you we say, got look, at, look at we our got impact. The you know, this impact report is important. Yeah. And we got the tools. So, like, you don't have to look for the books online or anything. We have the books. So we got we got we got journals. We got locals, uh, West Coast Credible Messenger journals. We got locals, uh, West Coast Credible Messengers uh, coloring books, cultural coloring books. I mean, we're gonna talk aside from this. So once, once we establish this, um, the certification introduction. Keep in mind, this is an introduction because this requires several modules and several conversations. Um, you know, to be able to do the work extensively and really uh, fulfill fulfill the obligations and especially under the eye of institutions, you know, you want to set the standard. You want to go in, don't, you want to go in and, and, and set the pace for this curriculum without stepping on toes and making people look bad. You know, the last thing people want is to make to to be made look bad at their job, you know. So I think working in in conjunction and working with the institution, especially the lead that has you in there, whoever you're working with, in 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 conjunction, I think that that also makes a big difference. Is how to communicate these tools and saying, hey, you know what, um, we're gonna do a partnership certification i have you know our program only allows us to be better in this work um our partners have contracts uh you know uh out of state um you know partners that are from here locals from here from southern california and they're making a pit an impact nationwide even globally and so i think once you start you know i think once you start legitimizing the work and legitimizing the network, you have more confidence in fulfilling that work and knowing that you're not by yourself in the works, right? But it takes the mess out. Like, this is extremely crucial because then we get to communicate about what tools are needed and, you know, what, 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 you know, what specifically drives your group. You know, for some, for some, it's going to be, you know, physical, you know, getting in with their hands. So we look for partners that are in the automotive. In the in the arts, you know, uh, uh, paintings, um, mirroring, uh, uh, even fine arts, you know, we get them introduced to that. But then, you know, you got some that are into the academics. So, you know, we got a way to to connect the dots with with resources with that. But this only make validates and 
strengthens the union, you know, because sometimes, you know, if you if you need options abroad, if you need options out of state, if you need to say, man, this, the, my environment is not really safe for me, where else can I go? It's like we got a we got a, a network that we're building and I'm you know, you can imagine I want to turn this into a global network, you know, where we can connect on a worldwide scale and go visit these different barrios, go different these visit these different colonias, go impact these different locations, these different institutions, and maybe even run a course and partner with these locations that, as we're developing right now. And then we say, well, how can we do this, you know, on our on our dime? How can we do this with, 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 with you know, when we need a dollar and we got two quarters, you know, like, well, we're working on that. This is the, this is the, this is, I, I think, the foundation of, of talking about how can we fulfill that work. So, so, you know, thinking ahead and thinking about everyone's need and thinking about how everything is expensive and things cost money is just, you know, another way to also legitimize <clears throat> those individuals that are that are committed, right? So like saying like uh, uh, this program is is for you. You know, we're investing the time, we're investing the knowledge. What what can we do together? What can you do to fulfill the obligation that we're matching you with? A thousand dollar introductory fee for the program that we give you a rebate on, right? Um, so it's thinking ahead and thinking about using the tools seriously and how we can collaborate to, again, open that pipeline, no? Amazing, yo. That's what's up. And then, Adrian, I saw your hand up, too. My boy, go ahead. Jump in there. <clears throat> yeah, I was going to say uh, thank you, Flaco, and thank you, Spanky. Uh, I could relate to that part where, where the homie Spanky was talking about, like, how he used some sentence, right? Because I still don't get to facilitate my own classroom but i get to go in there and tutor some of the kids that are taking college courses or that are even taking high school courses so one thing that i've done is basically when i'm working with them um i'll teach them like i'll teach them a little bit about art right even though i'm not supposed to i'm mindful like i build relationships with them and i'm like look man check this out i'm, I'm not gonna teach you the full alphabet a lot of them like writing so i teach them calligraphy right so I teach them a little bit about the ABCs and small in increments. And I'm like, look, this is from, from A to like F and basically keep doing good in school. If you guys continue to do good, your assignments continue to shine, I'll teach you the rest. But that's one thing that Spanky does that I that I do that resonated with me because, you know, I go in there and they get excited. I teach them how to write. And then, you know, as I continue to do good, I teach them the other half and then, you know, half and half and little by little and they they get excited, you know, they they look forward to it. But that's that's one thing that that um that Spanky share that that resonates. Like you give them incentives and and, and they look forward to you and you know they, they enjoy working with you. You know, but definitely um I appreciate everything that you share, Flacco as well. You know, I feel that a lot of times, man, when you when you when like our, our our kids, you know, they're the man, they're bright ass kids, you know, and they could thrive, you know. And I've had a lot of, a lot of conversations with these kids in the juvenile halls. They're smart as hell, you know. But at the but at the same time, people don't understand that they learn differently, right? They uh, um, a lot of people say, okay, they're dumb or they're ignorant, but that's not the case. They just don't learn at your pace, um, with your language. The backgrounds are different. You got to know how to talk to them, and you got to know how to communicate to be able to. To, to build relationships like that, they're able to thrive and, and, and reach their full potential. And that's what a lot of uh, um, professors don't know. A lot of these so-called professionals, they're not aware because they don't come from the hood. You get me? And even with Cheech, sometimes we're, we're walking through campus and we're like the only two homies that are on campus all blasted up. People are staring at us, looking at us different, even stereotyping us. But the fact that we got each other, we support one another, and we're just on our grind, minding our own business, man. It's a great experience. So we try to bring a lot of a lot of that support back to to some of these youth, and with the intent of being able to, you know, bring all this knowledge and and bring it back to our communities and and help out our our youth, you know. So 
I appreciate what, what both of you are doing with this work, man. Yeah, that's what's up, Adrian. Yeah, not, uh, you, you make a Beautiful. lot of, you know, great points, you know, with what you're saying is, you know, uh, uh, we, we got to bring this knowledge back, you know. Um, and you're right, homie. They, they did say we were ignorant. They did say all these messed up things about us. But look at us now. You're in Cal Berkeley. You know what I'm saying? Like some of their some of their kids didn't even get accepted by Cal. And you got accepted by Cal Berkeley. You know what I'm saying? And then myself, I'm in my PhD. Like we grew up in this disgusting system that labeled us gang members, that labeled us uh uh, you know, uh uh trash, that that treated us as such, right? And and we th we still thrived and overcame it all. And and we showcase our genius every single day. Every single day by all of us being here today, we're all geniuses by showing up and, and, and taking and participating in this. This is a genius uh, training right here. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, nah, we, we, and I always tell the little homies that I, every time I said, we're all geniuses. We have an yes. inner genius in us. And this inner genius has knowledge that the world has never even tapped into yet. The third imagine eye is calcified, all the knowledge. Homie. Yep. Imagine the all the knowledge. Calcified. You just yep. got to clear out the, you know, clear yep. that out, clear out the third eye and you tapped in only once you're tapped in, that's it. Your, your motivation is at, you know, at a, at a thousand, you know, to nurture this, this, this new found talent. You know what I mean? I think, um, this is a, this is, this, in, this introduction is going to be a two part. Um, I want to get, I want to get everyone wrapped up at 11 o'clock. Right. Uh, so that's nine, 10, 11. That's two hours. But we're going to we're going to we're going to do another date, possibly according to you guys, schedule, possibly next Saturday morning to con to conclude this this um introduction. I feel like I feel like it's going to require a little bit more time. And so what we're going to do is make it a, f a four hour introduction a certification but we're gonna split it into two so today uh we'll be blessed with the opportunity to run it until 11 o'clock and then um we're gonna pick a date that works with everyone and it has to be immediate so that way we're fresh with the information and motivated and um and so also what i want what I want everyone to do is to think, kind of take notes, kind of take notes and, and kind of think about what support is immediately needed in your, in your area and how we can facilitate it, how you think as a group, we can attack it. That's one thing that I want you guys to, to put together. Another one is a list of a demographic that you serve. So like, if you guys are already working with a population I'm curious to know what that looks like. And then another one is what partners do you guys have? That's a crucial one that I'd love to also interject about is what partners do you have? Because I feel like the network here is important in the way where I want to be able to offer you guys everything that you need to be successful. Even if it means that you come out of the area, that you go from uh, local, regional, to do something national, like coming out to Seattle to do a speaking, coming into the institution to work with some of my kids, um, going out to the academy, the military academy where I work at with another 150 kids during the week that you guys can come and have great conversations with. The same oppressed youth, oppressed youth, systemic, systemically oppressed, brown people that need positive attention, positive encouragement that are kind of fight, fight, you know, falling under falling under those same same um destructive behaviors. So um sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to interject that real quick, Flacco. But um the last few minutes of this is golden. By all means take notes and then we're gonna um we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna popcorn with some questions. Um whatever that might be, whatever comes to mind with with the introductory part, and I feel like Flacco touched a lot of the important, relevant information. Um, I think it's it's really crucial to understand that, yeah, knowledge is power, but how you how you deliver that knowledge and who you deliver it with makes a big difference. 
You know what I'm saying? It makes a big, big difference. And we all can agree on that. And I don't need to interject more with that. You guys know where I'm going with that. And so with that said, if it takes a group that understands that demographic and has, you know, has been through those experiences because we're part of that demographic, then, you know, then we're, then we obviously have, you know, not the best tools, but we have better tools to assist. I can't, I can't guarantee we have the best tools, but we have a lot of the great tools to assist. And I feel like even in my early stages of doing the work, I could feel the impact already, feel the positive impact. I feel like it takes generations to see what the work is going to look like, right? How successful were you? How successful were your kids? How successful were your kids' kids, you know, from here? But hopefully we start planting a seed and we start a culture, right? We start a culture of wellness. We start a culture of well-being. We start a culture of 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 uh, uh, positivity, positive vibes. No matter what it looks like, I think we 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 fit that profile of of promoting that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I I you know you guys telling me, hey, you know, like don't do it like this, don't do it like that. I'm gonna absorb that from a like minded individual, and to do that is the most gangster thing you could do. You know what I mean? That's the most gangster thing you could do. So. Thank you so much for everyone's participation. Amazing. All right. So I'm going to jump into uh, the foundations of the Credible Messenger work, and then we'll open it up for questions. Um, So let me see here. Let me pop that up real quick. Uh, Okay. Um, yeah, no, that's not it. Here, let me see real quick. Let me stop that share. Here, let me go over here for this one. Here it is. All right. All right. I got it coming up right now. And then we'll finish off with this one right here. Uh so the foundations of the credible messenger work, this one right here is super important. And I, and I really want you to really take notes on this. Um, so core principles and values, credible messengers work is rooted in a distinct set of principles and values that guide our approach to mentoring and community intervention. These core principles help shape the interactions between credible messengers and those they mentor fostering personal and social transformation within the community. So we've been talking a lot about trauma. And one thing I want you all to really take into your mind is trauma-informed care uh, pedagogy. So this trauma-informed care principles, um, this is what we're rooted in. We're rooted in working with the communities hands-on, where it's not us overseeing the communities. No, we're entrenched in the community, working side-by-side -side with them. Now, uh, one thing that I want you guys to really keep at the forefront of your mind and heart at all times as a credible messenger is you want to come with empathy and compassion. At the heart of the credible messenger work is the capacity to empathize with the struggles of others. Credible messengers understand firsthand the challenges faced by those who are in these communities suffering from this systemic oppression um, and approach them with compassion rather than judgment, understanding that their response system is, is, is forcing them to respond to this oppression in a certain way whether it be getting high on drugs, whether it be resorting to violence, whether it be having that violent, uh, you know, homie uh, heart, you know what I'm saying, because of the oppression you're experiencing. Um, and the, this connection often bridges the gap between the mentor and the mentee, creating a foundation of trust and mutual respect. The next one is accountability and responsibility. Credible messengers, we model that accountability both in our personal lives and in our mentor uh, relationships. We demonstrate the importance of taking responsibility for our actions at all times, helping our mentees understand the consequences of their decisions while guiding them toward more positive choices. Now, we really want to uh, really have at the forefront of our mind 
that our responses are to actions. So for every action, there's a reaction. So we never want to judge a person's reaction to whatever actions are being, uh, you know, taken out on them. Um, we we want to meet everyone where they're at. Um, authenticity and honesty. Um, we as credible messengers are valued for our authenticity because we have lived through many of the same experiences as our mentees. We are often seen as more relatable and trustworthy. This authenticity fosters honest communication, allowing for deep, meaningful connections. Now, this one right here is key to success, and I, and I keep emphasizing this one. It's the empowerment and transformation. This is a key principle of the Credible Messenger's work. It's about empowering our mentees to take control of their lives and make positive changes. Rather than imposing solutions, us credible messengers help these individuals find their own path forward, encouraging personal growth and transformation through self-discovery. So this one's very critical, and this is one that I really want you to really have at the forefront of your mind and heart as you start to work with folks around you. It's about empowering them. It's about uh, giving them a, a, a blueprint to success, but realizing that they're going to make their own blueprint to success. Showcasing your blueprint to success is only going to give them a pathway to see the light and, and to see past the systemic oppression they're facing daily. Commitment to community. Credible messengers were deeply committed and invested in the well-being of our neighborhoods and communities. We serve. Our work is not just about individual mentoring, but also about contributing to the broader social fabric of promoting peace, cohesion, and empowerment within our communities. So as credible messengers, we serve multifaceted roles, each essential to our mission of fostering positive change within our neighborhoods and communities. Our responsibilities go beyond traditional mentorship as our both role models and advocates for the individuals and communities that we support. So we are mentors and role models. The primary role of a credible messenger is to be a positive mentor and role model to those who are out in the communities still falling into the traps of the systemic oppression and, and resorting to uh, mechanisms that continue the legitimization of the system violence uh you know uh, uh dealing dope you know like uh, i get it we're struggling we need feria and 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 it's understandable but man we, we we have to be all in on this positive side so as a as a mentor as as as, as a, a role model we can't be one foot in one foot out it's it's all in on the credible messenger's work the credible messenger side and 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 realizing that that's going to come with a lot of a lot of uh, sacrifice, you're gonna have to sacrifice a lot. But at the end of the day, no matter what, we're showing up for our neighborhoods and we're showing up for our people. So that's that's you know value in itself. Um, so we're mediators and conflict resolvers. So in many communities, there's a lot of violence. There's a lot of trauma. There's a lot of back and forth. There's been a lot of stuff carried out against each other. It's understandable why this violence exists, but at the end of the day, we can no longer legitimize this violence. So as, as, as credible messengers for our communities, we, we need to go in and mediate these conflicts, and we need to be conflict resolvers. We need to create agreements to end all hostilities. We can no longer go on carrying out these hostilities and cannibalizing each other and cannibalizing our community members. Um, we play an essential role in de-escalating tensions and mediating these conflicts. Conflicts. Given our credibility and lived experience, we can serve as neutral parties who understand both sides of the conflict and guide individuals toward peaceful resolutions. Um, and now this is an important one. And this one I really want you guys to walk away with. We're advocates and community leaders. As credible messengers, as West Coast credible messengers, as locals credible messengers, we are often 
advocates for systemic change within our communities, raising awareness about the root causes of issues like violence, poverty, and injustice. We advocate for policies and programs that support rehabilitation and social equity and upward mobility. And we will act as leaders who push from broader social reform at all times. Um, we're transforming the entire makeup of our communities. And then we're a support system and a guide. It's important to be a support system and a guide to our people. Um, as credible messengers, we all have expansive networks. As leaders, we've shook a lot of people's hands. It's important to share our networks. It's important to open up the door to our people and allow to, our people to thrive, allow our people to, to step away from survival and, th and get into the mentality of thriving and, and constantly thriving and pushing forward and, and experiencing upward mobility. This includes helping individuals navigate their challenges of reintegration after incarceration, help them find employment, pursue education, or simply cope with everyday struggles. As credible messengers, we often build long-term relationships that go beyond a typical mentorship structure and a connector to resources. We are the plug. We've always been the plug, but now we're the plug of positivity. We're no longer the dope plug. We're no longer the plug, you know, uh, where the party's at. We're no longer that plug. We're the plug of healing. We're, we're, we're healers. And we need to embrace that. Um, you know, uh, as credible messengers, we serve as bridges between our mentees and essential services. We guide them. We make sure that they understand that they, 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 that they need to have confidence and go into these spaces with confidence and embrace their lived experience. Their lived experience is valuable. It's a tremendous asset to the communities and it's an asset to every piece of every system that exists. Um, so opening up employment opportunities, mental health support, connecting them with that, um, legal aid. Um, you know, uh, you know, one of the little homies was on earlier. We're going to have hiccups. This is not going to be a smooth process. And when we come into this work, we need to understand that there's going to be hiccups. That it's not going to go uh, uh, smooth uh, sailing. It's there's we, we're, we come with a lot of turbulence because we're dealing with and we're unpacking a lot of our trauma. So that that that's, you know, uh, uh you know, the, the first beginning stages of understanding this credible messenger's role that you all are in now. Um, I want to welcome you to this uh, this international network of credible messengers on behalf of West Coast Credible Messengers and locals, West Coast Credible Messengers. And uh, you guys are credible messengers today. We're certifying you as credible messengers. We're going to have another episode of this and we're just going to keep this flowing. I think this was a good start, um, but you guys are certified credible messengers and after our next one that we decide on we'll get you guys your certifications we'll get you guys set up to go out and be successful doing this work as credible messengers in your communities and neighborhoods that you come from much love much respect it's been a great honor to share this knowledge with you today and i'll open it up for questions and and uh and we can you know uh really unpack what we've learned today Uh, I just wanted to make right. a quick. Oh, who's going? Go ahead, Alex. Okay, I was just gonna say um, to piggyback off of the what Flaco was saying about the um, employment opportunities uh, here in Washington. So that meeting that that meeting that I'm working on setting up um, is with uh, somebody that is a representative for the laborers union here in Washington. Uh, she represents like nine different counties uh, in Western Washington. So I'm hoping that um, that partnership can help kind of guide some of these troubled youth into jobs and stuff like that. Um, and the other thing that I was, that I wanted to kind of touch on was um, here, in, here in Washington. And I know that's like kind of all over the place, but as of lately uh, we've been dealing with an issue with uh you got like a lot of young kids, like 13, 14 years old out here pulling triggers for 
for nothing. And it is getting, I, I mean, it, I, I'm sure that other people here can attest to the fact that it's a lot worse now than what it used to be because, of, you know, a lot of these kids are growing out, growing up without the love and compassion that they had, you know, that they need to have at home. And so I really think that it's important, you know, even outside of the juvenile system and outside of the youth academy and stuff like that, to find ways to uh, interject into the, like into the communities too, um, to kind of reach these kids before it, before it ruins them for life. You know what I'm saying? These kids are 13, 14 years old out here killing people for nothing and not, and their brain can't comprehend. That's it. That's a wrap. And it's, you know, it's, it's over really, it's over really small things. And, you know, like I said, I, I grew up where I grew up at, we, you know, we were like clear backpacks to school and stuff, had to go through scanners and stuff because that's what kids were doing. But it was also, in, you know, in a rough part of California. So now I'm seeing that stuff come here. And so, you know, whenever me and Spanky were talking, I was like, man, I was like, this is, this is deep. And I, you know, so I, for me, it's like, a, um, it's not my whole dear and dear to my heart because, I got kids, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not really trying to have them. Uh, I, I want to find a way that I could also lead them. So being with you guys and being a part of this group is also going to help me coach my kids as long as, you know, as well as the kids on the outside too. That's a good one. Intervention, intervention intensive intervention. And that's a good one because it starts, it starts at home and it starts at the schools, you know? Right. So sometimes it does mean – going into the schools and having us having the, those type of conversations, you know, to see what they're facilitating and what the, what the youth are encountering. If, if you don't have a population to serve, you know, if you're not overwhelmed with the work is going out and communicating, but we'll get to those steps too. That way yeah. you guys got the right tools and, you know, and you guys could go up from, from here and we can work on the partnerships because this is what it is, is partnerships at this point how we can partner to really maximize the impact of the group. Yeah, not well said, you know, uh, we'll, we'll get those tools and we'll work together to really, you know, uh, uh, dismantle, you know, all of that that's happening. Um, it's going to take a lot of work, though, a lot of time, a lot of dedication and, 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 uh, and understanding, you know, that the system thrives off of this existing in our communities. Um, it legitimizes all that money that they get. So, you know, we have to make these little homies and these little youngsters realize, like, you're just playing into what, what they want, you know, and, and at the same time, cannibalizing your neighbors. Um, and these neighbors are important. I think one thing about uh, uh, the United States is we've gotten away from loving thy neighbor. Um, and that's an important piece that we need to bring back into our communities is loving thy neighbors. Um, really understanding that our neighbors are, they're all, one thing, that, a quote that one of my one of my mentors and one of a really good solid homie told me, and, and it was like the breakdown of the of the 2011 2013 prisoner hunger strikes and the agreement to end all hostilities he said the equality of suffering equals solidarity equals organization equals action equals revolution once we realize that we're all equally suffering the same we will become one in solidarity once we become one in solidarity, we will all organize together as one. And once we organize together as one, we will create actions that in return will revolutionize our communities and the system we're in. So I I, I, I like that piece right there. And, and I share that with you all because that's what we up to. That's what we have to, we have to show up for the little homies. You know, we have to show up and we have to tell them we can't legitimize this system anymore. We gotta, we gotta create alternative means to dealing with our conflicts um, and, and innovative uh, means for dealing with our conflicts. You know, one program we got over here in LA is the gloves, not guns program where we got neighborhoods that have, uh, that have signed on to agree all, all hostilities, to agree against gunplay, and they meet on a monthly basis at a peace conference. And in this peace, co peace conference, we have a gloves, not guns program where they get in the ring and they box each other. I mean, taking it to that level to save lives, I think it's important, you know, but we have to understand that the system does not want us to carry this mission out. 
They depend on crime to exist. You got to figure if crime disappeared today, what would happen? If crime was gone today, what would happen? They don't make money. It's exactly. a property. The entire system would collapse. Right. And so we've, we're not even we've, they've created a system that depends on crime to exist in the community in order to get their profits. So they depend on this crime to exist. So we've created a whole entire system that depends on this crime to exist. So, yeah, so I'll open it up. I see some other folks. Maybe we go down the line and we just do like, what is your takeaway? So I'll start it off with, uh, I see some folks, Marvin. I see Marvin on the line. What's up, Marvin, man? Good to see you, bro. Uh, well, what's your takeaways of this session? Okay, maybe Marvin, maybe Marvin's struggling to get his thing going. Uh, how about Toro? Toro, what's your takeaways of this session? You hear me, my boy? Yeah, I hear hey. you. Uh, man, what I'm I'm just soaking up game from everybody on this. It's a lot of a lot of good info I'm getting from everybody. Took a lot of notes. Um, I haven't really got to work in facilities like you, like the, like the rest of you guys have. And I think that's higher that's special. Where I started was with my little homie on the block. You know. Uh, I have a little total, you know, I have him out there working, helping his mom instead of being on the street with the homies, doing the drugs, gangbang, you know what I mean? I got Eddie boy. I'm trying to get in the same thing, but he, he's kind of stuck there. So picking up a lot of information, talking about the new brainwave, uh, homie was talking about Long Beach right here, um, teaching them how to do different things, change those patterns. Like there's a lot of good information right here. I'm talking a lot of game from you guys. I can't wait to get facilities to start helping the youth like that too. That's what's up, Toro. Gracias for that. And then uh, if Marvin, if you're available, you could just unmute any time. Uh, how about you, Gary? I want to apologize to you guys. I uh, I got in right at the end, probably the last 15, 20 minutes. I had some jobs that were uh, switched around at the last minute. But uh, one thing I see is just like, the uh, gentleman was saying a little bit ago about the, the kids being 13, 14 years old. I know when I was growing up, you know, 15, 16, maybe you started looking at a lot of these things and, and looking towards maybe gangs or, or uh, looking for some sort of, some sort of support in a way outside of home. And now it's just kind of changed into a whole different atmosphere where, you know, people really don't see the, the beginning and end <clears throat> I apologize I'm real sick uh but it's it, it life and death is looked at in a different way I think than when we were all growing up and I think that uh a lot of the influence that comes from just your phone me and Spanky were just talking about that the other day you know they have something in their pocket nowadays that we didn't have as kids that's a lot of influence and um uh, you can flick through there and just see a bunch of people that you might want to emulate what they're doing. And, and some of those messages aren't very positive. That's what's up. Thank you so much for that. And how about you, uh, Nitty? Oh man. Uh, well, um, like, uh, like my brother there was saying, uh, Toto, uh, we we've we've taken a whole different direction since since I came into things and uh, was successful in business and bringing our our our, our clique or everything that we believed in into a certain position, and then watching the art of deception just go right in front of us. We 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 just did it about face, man, and. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, it's not it's not like we we leaving the mess, but we're doing the work, and uh, I'm doing a lot of work over here, man, to to go back in, um, physically, mentally, and spiritually, uh, on a whole different level than I've ever been. Um, these groups here, these meetings, I think are are beneficial for everyone that attends. Um, once again, I said just the way you unpack things. Listen to Spanky Loco on here today. And God bless you, brother. 
love to see you on here, man, making your moves. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I've been, uh, I was at doing some yard time, getting me in for my class a license. So I've been, uh, on and off, but, um, this just, uh, kind of, uh, solidifies a little bit more, uh, of the verbiage, the language used, uh, Spanky gave a lot of, um, uh, gave me a lot of insight. I caught a lot of insight of, uh, you know, not trying to piss anybody off, um, you know, taking notes on them too. And, uh, the other, the other homie that was uh, teaching the kids lettering, um, uh, I was thinking of barbering, stuff like that. I know a lot of barbers too. So, uh, really, really, I learned a lot, man. Again, today, man, uh, congratulations to everybody. Thank you very much for sharing your knowledge and thank you all for your work, man. Amazing. That's what's up, Nitty. And then Eric Flores. Hey, what's up, Marco? Thank you very much. Uh, man, definitely, you know, great presentation. You know, a lot of key points. You know, there's a lot of points that, you know, a lot of people don't pick up, especially when we start working with the youth, right? And definitely, I mean, we, we could tell by the way they walk, talk, and act, right? Because we've been there, we've done that. But now seeing it on a better perspective, right, where we could align with them and now show them a little bit a different way to dress, right? A different music to listen to, to start believing in themselves, bro. And, you know, I appreciate all your guys' wisdom and, you know, how we could, you know, collaborate and be able to, you know, gain the wisdom to engage our youth, right? Because that's their future. And, you know, like the homie said, you know, we got kids, we got nephews, you know, we don't want them to go through the same stuff that we went through. So it's definitely, you know, great work. And I appreciate everybody's testimony, everybody's, you know, knowledge and wisdom, you know, I really appreciate you guys. And, you know, it was an honor being right here in space with you guys. Amazing. That's Thank what's you. up, M M Manny. Thank you. You know, my takeaway from this was amazing. Flaco, once again, I appreciate everything that you did, the knowledge that you dropped on us. Every single one of you guys, man, Adrian, Alex, Eric, Alejandro, uh, Toro, Nitty, Cheech, everybody, everybody, whether it's at the facilities or in your community, man, we're all making a difference in, in one person, even to one kid, you know, makes all the difference. Because that one kid, if you can change that one kid's mind, guess what? That kid's going to help preach about what, what we got going on, too. That's it. That's my takeaway. Again, Flaco, like I said, man, this was amazing. That's what's up, Manny. Yeah, no, gracias. You know, like you you say something important, one person, well, guess what? We got, we got like 13 people right here. You know what I'm saying? So even our minds have changed and we were out there amazing, like, de de destroying, you know? So yeah, that's amazing. Um, And then uh, 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 I'll, I'll open it up. Uh, So Elijah was next. talking to everybody uh my my takeaway from this is that this kind of work can't be done by one person it, it takes you know it's going to take people from all different type of areas people from with all different type of experiences you know real solid homies to go teach other real solid homies um another thing is and then i always take away from going to meetings like this or just stuff like this is that like like to preach to these little homies you have to like, they have to be able to relate to you. You have to be sympathetic with them. They got to have, you know, they got to know, they got to, they got to know you're a solid homie because they're not going to follow you if you ain't solid. Like, you know, no one wants to follow somebody they don't relate to. And another thing is like, like what I personally like to do is like, I don't preach to them to leave their neighborhood behind or none of that. Because if like, I'm a youngster myself, or you would come to me with this work and preach, you know, to just leave the life behind and leave it all put it all down for good, just, just like that, I would never get involved with this work because neighborhoods to me will never die. Everyone, no one's ever going to let their neighborhood die, but the stigma behind gangs could die. So that's what I'm, I'm trying to kill the stigma, not neighborhoods and the gangs. That's right. That's what's up. And uh, Cheech. Oh, gracias, Flaco. Yeah, so I'm taking away a lot of good knowledge. Uh, you know, takes takes a 
there's no unity without community, right? And there's no community without unity. We're all for each other. Um, one thing that that I'm gonna take back to the halls is I'm gonna have uh the homies. Did I freeze? Are you guys still there? Yeah, we're here. Okay. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna have the little homies uh switch hands and righty, right? From left to right or right to left. And and that was a good uh you know demonstration about how you know we're we're getting out of that comfort zone, right? So man, I appreciate that. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna implement that in Wednesday Wednesday's class just to you know, get a feel for it and let these kids know hey, it's okay if we're different. Eh? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, no, nah, I think you hit something really, uh, really uh, important right there, getting out of the comfort zone. I, one of the greatest quotes I really hold in my heart is Michael Jordan's quote. He says, put yourself in 12 uncomfortable situations daily and you will find yourself successful. If you're not uncomfortable, you're not growing. And it's important to put yourself in uncomfortable situations, uncomfortable feelings, all of it to grow. Um, so that's what's up, Cheech. Gracias. And then um, I'm going to pass it over to Alex. Um, first off, I want to say uh, thank you, everybody, for the time and the knowledge um, that you guys have all shared as well. Um, obviously, like my my takeaway from this is like uh, people have said, like it takes more than one person to to go out and, and make it, you know, make a difference and make a change. Um, and those people being from all different walks of life, like all of our experiences here in this meeting, all of our experiences are different, but we can utilize that to branch out to all these kids that have different experiences too. You know, I mean, my experience is like, you know, it's between the military and then being, you know, like the military was my high road, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and then like with Spanky working with the youth Academy, like a lot of those, uh, I've actually worked alongside some of those kids that came out of that program that joined into the ranks of the military. And, um, if it wasn't for that program, they wouldn't have made it very far. So, or they wouldn't have had a chance to make it that far. Um, so my, my takeaway from this is that, uh, I mean, obviously, like, I'm I'm really stoked to have this opportunity. Um, there's definitely a wealth of knowledge and, uh, uh, like, what Adrian, Adrian's got a lot of, he's got a lot of, uh, a lot of key tools that I, you know, that I'd like to implement myself whenever I'm helping Spanky out. Um, I think all that stuff is, is very vital. So, again, I appreciate uh, all your guys' time in this, and uh, I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to be along for this journey. That's what's up. Alejandro. What's up, y'all? I think my main takeaway is probably just like knowing that I'm able to lean on you guys for support. Because I know like for me personally, like this type of work could feel sometimes really isolating. Sometimes it feels like for me, I'm like the only homie from my hood that's doing this type of work, you know, and it could be pretty overwhelming. Or it could make me feel like sometimes like I'm doing something that maybe I'm not supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? Like, especially somebody like, cause I'm a younger homie too, you know? So for me, like just seeing everybody here today, to me is like a testament of all of our like commitment to this journey, you know? And we're all walking this path together, you know, towards the same goal. So just seeing everybody here today, for me, it's like, you know, like I'm not alone, you know, I could go down the street and I hit up the homie Flacco or the homie Elijah. They're like right here, right next to me. Or, you know, we could hop on the Zoom calls and, and just chop it up about how we feel. Or, you know, especially most of us are going into like the halls and stuff. We're all having like similar but distinct experiences. And getting to like debrief about those types of things to me is like, is like proof that the the work we're doing is having an impact on people, you know? Like getting to talk so, about like, or, or, you know what I mean? Like when we debrief with the youngsters in there too and getting to share like those types of stories. Amazing, yo. That's what's up. And then uh, Adrian. Okay. First and foremost, thank you guys for allowing me to share space. 
Um, my key, my key t- uh, takeaway is basically to be a credible messenger and to be a local. You really gotta have heart. You get me? <laughs> and part of being a local, like many of us come from different communities, and at one point we were all locals for our Dude. neighbor, for our community. You know, we made it this far because we have that ability to survive, to think, to strategize. But most importantly, for some of us that are older, even some of the youngsters that are here, you know, if you come from the from from the eighties and seventies or whatnot, one thing that you brought to your neighborhood is commitment and having that commitment, which is a core value to being a credible messenger. You know, we weren't out there or those of us that come from the neighborhood, like you weren't out there gang banging Mondays and Tuesdays or or taking Mondays and Tuesdays off and, and then gang bangings on the weekend. It was a commitment. We had heart. The only difference on that we're, we're changing that story. We're put, we're having heart and, 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 and turning it around. Like somebody like a homie was sharing earlier. He, and, and he was saying like, you got to have that heart and then you got to implement positivity and change our negative lifestyle and, and put it into something different. So that was my key takeaway. You know, you got to have hard to do this work. You got to have hard to be, to embody, be that, that example to a lot of these kids, because I was reflecting um, when I was a kid in juvenile halls, man, I wouldn't really listen to some of the staff, you know, but I remember once in a while, like if you have somebody that kind of relates like you, uh, mm. um, I'm from your yeah, back down, like you were paying attention. You wanted to see what what they had to say. Mm. And we didn't have the resources. We didn't have people that, like, I wish I had a mentor, someone that looked like me, that came from my background, from my community, because I knew we mm. late. And that's what that's that's when we come in. We come into play because a lot of these kids, they're gonna see that okay, you know, he's he's not here trying to tell me what to do, but he's trying to really help me out. He's trying to be that that uh. uh male figure that support that really like cares about me and and for me like i would always think like if my own growing up in my own community if my own family doesn't give a fuck about me excuse my language why am i gonna think that anyone else does but when they see that when i started seeing that genuine stranger started caring about me that's when my perspective changed and that's when we come in and we bring that value to these youngsters man we see that we genuinely care without without getting anything from 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 them in return they're they're gonna, they're gonna see that, that that we genuinely care about them, you know. And it goes goes to that concept that Flacco talked about, man. Fuck, getting exploited and and extracted from our resources, you know. It's time for us to rise. So thank you. Hey, so yeah, hey, that's hey. right. Inspiring. That's right. Thank you, y'all. Big Damn, time. Yeah, we and got Marvin, Marvin. Marvin was the one. He, he, I think he was we busy earlier. Soldiers. He couldn't unmute. Let me see if I can get him to unmute. Marvin, where you at, bro? It's all good. Go ahead. Go ahead, Spanky, man. It's on you now, boy. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, a whole lot of points. I hope, I hope, I hope, I, I mean, I'm taking mental notes. I hope you guys are taking notes as we, as we close the session. Um, I think, I think it's, it's um important to say that there's, that there's more things in motion immediately after this. Um, there's tools that we're going to email, um, there's projects we're going to work on, and then there's, there's surveys that we're going to send out. So just stay, stay, um, stay aware that we got to stay in the loop if that's something that you guys want to do. Um, we're going to do a group text so we can chop it up regularly about what this looks like. And, and, and since the little homie was saying that you know, sometimes it's a it, there's solitude in this in this world. You know, to navigate, you're navigating sometimes in the dark. Well, maybe we can have uh, a chat, a, a a group chat where we can communicate our accomplishments, how our days went, our um our boundaries, uh, and see if there's you know if there's constant communication to you know, suggest positive behavior and maybe even advice or uplift someone to have the best day that they can have in the field. So um, be aware of that. And then this is to formalize all the tools that we need because I want to go to your institution. I want to go to your schools. I want to go to your uh, locations, to your barrios. Um, and I want I want us to 
to start there. You know, you guys come to my area and I guys I I go to you guys' area. And um and we have these certifications, work on the next phase, clear clear this one, talk about what more partnerships look like, and then and then build from there. So thank you very much, fellas. A special thanks to all the participants. Thank you so much. This was overwhelmingly beautiful. And then of course to um Flacco for always having the knowledge to help us keep this together because although our hearts might know where we're what we're trying to do, sometimes it takes way more than our hearts. It takes the knowledge, right? It takes the know-how to know how to maneuver in the system, right? We got to play them at their own game, right? So unless we know how to play them at that game, then, uh, uh, then, then, then what we feel in our hearts is, is, is not even relevant. You know what I'm saying? And so I think all these tools are extremely crucial. Certifications, hey, I'm certified to do the work. Oh, well, what does that mean? Well, join with our partners. You know, we've aligned with county officials and we've aligned with state officials and we've aligned with certain groups that understand the value of this work. And once you start having that support then you're saying okay firme this is not this is not as difficult these boundaries we're gonna get over them these are not walls that we can't tear down you feel me so thank you so much consider this another tool congratulations fellas thank you for the introduction uh much love everyone i'm gonna i'm gonna lean on flaco to get everyone's information formally the homies that are in washington for the most part um, we're already connected, but I believe there was someone else that was in Washington that's in the group. I'd love to connect someone in King County. That's amazing. So I'd love to connect with everyone, with everyone, but especially if we're here immediately and we can connect to do a few things. Like I said, I've got a few relevant things in the works with Flaco. Um, definitely keeping all of you in mind so that we can come together as a group to formalize, uh, uh, to keep formalizing what we're doing here as locals. And then, um, of course, now I'm thinking like, man, this is so amazing that I've been doing the work uh, very regularly. I'm sure you guys have probably have been doing it, even your own jobs, taking care of your own kids, whatever that looks like. So what I want to do is I want to do a men's retreat for the fellas so we can talk about what that looks like, you know, when, when the season is correct and you know that takes planning that takes several months of you know the next season or whatever that looks like but we start it now we start that culture now of healing and helping each other um um continue the work and lifting each other and that requires recharging so uh a retreat to to reflect on us as as uh, key components of the game you feel me and to uplift each other and 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 to that moment to you know, bring value to our own time. Uh, I think that's extremely important. So think about all these things that we've got, you know, uh, lined up that I'm sure um, coincides with what with what you've been envisioning or with what your heart's been feeling. Now we're making it more concrete. Now we're making it for certain, you know what I mean? More validated. The tools will be there. The support will be there. Um quite a few different things, the knowledge. And then of course, we're learning from, from you guys as well. So God bless. Thank you for joining the group. Thank you to Flaco, super key component in this, in this um, situation, the clue behind the, you know, behind the whole idea, you know what I'm saying? Like locals is an idea. It's a concept. It's, we all, we're all locals, you know, like we all are bred from that concept, but Flaco really helped me put this together, you know, he helped me bring this to life. And the fact that I'm even in a juvenile detention center once a week and I have a contract with them that just extended for another year and I get to work with another facility that 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 houses um, a majority brown people, I, mean, I feel like, sheesh, I feel like it's a blessing, you know. Now, now the fact that I can have a group because I can't do the work on my own and you guys can't do the, uh, the work on your own either. Now that, that I, now that I can lean on, on my group, you know, now that I can lean on my team, then we, you know, then we talk about the development of the team overall, what it looks like to support everyone in their endeavors to make everyone great in what they do. You feel me? Filling everyone's cup. And that's, 
from you know from the financial to the to the to the social all of it you know we're trying to be a well-rounded group to support everyone and everyone's need all the way around you're chipping away at it so gracias thank you very much appreciate you all right everyone that's what's up well that's our uh that's our session for today uh you know the power invested in me from the streets uh from the ucs from the degrees from all of it um, I, uh, I, I announced all of you guys that are certified, uh, West Coast credible messengers, certified locals, credible messengers. And, uh, and, 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 you know, this comes with, you know, uh, consistently doing and carrying out this work and staying true to everything that you learned today. Um, and, uh, we'll set up another meeting in the next, uh, weekend to continue to learn and build this knowledge and, uh, and, and, and we'll get these certifications out. We'll get this, uh, this chat going with all of us and and we got big plans there's big things happening with 13 of us on right now we got a whole army right here of credible messengers and i'm excited to see all the amazing work and all the amazing things you do to transform your communities let's go thank you all right everyone have a good day let's go hey what's up gracias, you guys gracias have, a good everybody. have a blessed one good weekend everybody have a blessed day Buddy, have a good day. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start look. I'm gonna start looking for the flights and all of that, so we can like work on the game plan. Um, I definitely, I definitely need you to come out, but I want to make sure that I got a little something for you when you come out. You come That's and make kidding. a little feria while you come out. Well, you come out a couple of days, you know? Okay. Yeah, let me know. So, yeah, we got this. I I'm talked to that up. funder and um we'll